Hello and welcome to session number 52 of Outlander's Guide to Ledaria. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 We are back. Maybe we are even back on a on a regular schedule. That would be the, the dream. Welcome back to my table. I'm How are you all feeling? <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> How are y'all doing? How are your weeks? Your week? How was your week? A week. It was only one week this time. We're yeah. good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, shall we jump straight into it? We shall. We shall. In which case, I'm just going to go ahead and stop the music right away. I'm not even going to hear it loop once. Da -da 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 -da. Austin! Hello! Hello! It is your time. It's time for the recap. Everyone sit back, relax, grab a popcorn and snacks, because it's time for something. <laughs> Alright, hold on, don't start it. I have to go get popcorn. Uh, I think the time <laughs> is five minutes. Alright, nope, back. I'm going. Oh. <laughs> okay. Good enough. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's all, <laughs> stop it. It's not working. <laughs> I think I just have to close it to reopen it. E boop. It plays good over. Thing we, good thing we tested it <laughs> earlier yeah. and it's not. Oh no. Eh. I Oop. was right. You were. <laughs> you <detective> <laughs> skills. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry for the false start. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to spoil. I didn't know. <laughs> Are we good? Yes, yes. Okay. You're actually playing Overwatch. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Squeakers? Yeah, what's it's up? It's Pipalicious here with another epic Overwatch <laughs> 2 video. I'm here too. I convinced the professor to set up a magical computer with some magical Wi Fi that can run games between universes. So, I'm gonna pick Sigma here. You longtime subscribers will know why. It's cause he chucks rocks! And we know that anyone who chucks rocks also rocks. Yeah, buddy. So, while I play, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about what we've been up to here in Ladaria. Before starting our journey back through Dustfall in order to save Tekka, Leshkri announced that she wasn't gonna be sticking around and started looking at other doors she could go through. She picked the one that led to the east of Simleilon, and her mother decided that she had to go with her. Our new acquaintance, Virion, was curious about the tower, and so Brooke and the professor very vaguely described what it was about, while leaving out some minor details. She learned that the tower used to belong to Jamuel Fleetfoot, a person whom she said she had a bone to pick with, for not mentioning that the waters of Ladaria were full of devils. We had some questions to ask of Virion as well, most particularly about the gun that she had by her side. She said that it was a gift given to her for her service in the war, and that she has an official permit from the gnomes allowing her to use it, but currently it has no ammunition. This also brought about the shocking knowledge that she is older than oh, Professor Pontifex. That's crazy! <laughs> So, me and my buds went out the door leading to Dustfall and started our journey that way. On the way, I picked up some potion ingredients, and the professor realized that he could summon the tower that previously Talix summoned using his father Aaron Moore's leaf magic. We traveled for a few days, running into co some cool stone animals, petrified lands, and then we heard the barking of a dog. I understood what it was saying, and it was pleading for help. We went to the rescue of this gravel dog creature, finding it surrounded by four drippers, these horrible acid-spitting lizard monsters. We used all of our cool magic, missile-firing armor, pew, pew, pew. And arrows and swords and stuff to start getting rid of these monsters, and Virion proved herself to be a really good combat leader, calling the shots like a good teammate in Overwatch, which helped us land our hits better and win the fight even quicker. I was able to summon a bunch of Unin to the fight, and they totally ate everything on the drippers until there was nothing left. It was pretty brutal. So yeah, we rescued the gravel dog, and I started talking to her, and she said her name was Cuddles, and that she was the goodest girl. 
But her dad went missing, and she has no idea where he went. He was there until one day he just went poof and was gone. So yeah, now that we're back on the trail with Cuddles joining us, hopefully we can find her owner while also on the path to rescue Tekka. All right, I guess we'll find out. See ya. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> oh my god. I subscribed. You won me over. <laughs> Pip is a really experienced streamer. Like, didn't even flinch. Yeah, nonstop <laughs> chatting. Yeah. Dude. yeah. <laughs> very, very, very. What I it, was, to know is... it, it was definitely talking while playing the game. Yeah. Very impressive. Definitely. How many I also you, really appreciate you that you had a. Uh, another fellow voice actor come in and act out squeak at the same time because they were <laughs> yeah. at the same time and you totally didn't just redub over it. Yeah. That's a level of commitment and financial investment that I can appreciate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or that you have friends, which is kind of weird, but <laughs> Never heard of it. I'm trying to <clears throat> decide on a name for this one. Inspiration. Instrumation. Instrumation. Hey, it took me a moment for some reason. I don't know why. Um, just take it. It's good enough. Oh. <laughs> good luck with your new. Good luck with your new career. Thank you. Ah, uh, ooh, it's quiet around here. Oh my god, I just noticed. Look at all the inspiration we have on this table. I know. We're ready. We're ready. Are you though? Um, I don't oh. know. Oop. <clears throat> don't worry, Winthrop. I'll help out with this economy. I'll put myself into as much danger as I possibly can so that everyone feels obligated to give me their inspiration and I will clean this thing up for you. Again? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Again? <laughs> True. <laughs> <clears throat> so we resume um, from where we left off at, uh, at the end of the day when uh, you rescued Cuddles. Uh, as usual, uh, as it's now becoming a uh, normal routine for you guys, uh, it is Pontifex that now summons uh, the tower. Ah, is this, uh, uh, last time da, 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 for you at current level fourth. Okay, you have four floors to choose from. I vaguely remember that there was talk about maybe setting up the observatory in the future. So I'm just going to ask you again which floors uh, um, are available tonight in, in the tower. Was it brought up to him? I would imagine. Who who was talking about the observatory? Was it uh, Brooke Tavirian? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like Brooke would have brought it up then. Yeah, yeah. He's not yeah. much of a. <laughs> he's pretty talkative with with fun effects. <laughs> he's like the only one in the group that likes talking <laughs> to him. <laughs> uh, then yeah, um, observatory. Uh, obviously the the bottom floor. Um, wait, which one of these is the observatory? This one. This one. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's only this section that is actually um, outside. So, observatory, uh, spa, um, kitchen, and... Hmm. Observatory, spa, kitchen, and... What are the differences between these two rooms? Um, this one has board games and it's more for like leisure, uh, this is more of an office, uh, and it has like study materials and research notes. Okay, that one. Okay. Um, which one would be the ground floor, do you think, between the kitchen, uh, um, kitchen. and the office? Yeah, kitchen for sure. 
Okay. Uh, by now, uh, as you've been on the road for five days, including today, I would figure, but I'm going to like double check with you guys. Um, what was I saying? Oh, uh, that uh, your new companion uh, by now would have seen all of these rooms, right? Or at least the majority. Would 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 Varian have gotten to experience the spa? <laughs> If she wanted to, so probably all of them except I think the last empty time one. Pontifex called it. He spent mm. like the entirety of his time <laughs> in the tower in that spa. So, Fury would have pushed for it, but if it was offered, she'd take it. Mm. <laughs> Beware of frog. Yep, it's like a swamp. Okay. In there. That's not a hill she's gonna die on. Okay, uh, please. <laughs> Place your tokens on the map wherever they would be for the night. Um, for uh, just to bring this up on uh, on stream, uh, there was a tiny bit of uh, role play of text based role play that took place uh, um, that has been posted in our Discord server. Uh, that would have been something that would have happened uh, in game yesterday, uh, where Brooke and Pip got to. Um, have a conversation and comfort one another on their various worries, particularly the, the fears for their currently missing companions. Uh, and I wanted to give you both an inspiration for that too. So I'm Ooh. just gonna go ahead and do it now. I can have three? Indeed, both of you, I That's believe. That's too much power. Three? <laughs> <laughs> three? Let's go. I don't think I've ever been that rich. <laughs> or inspired rather. Yeah, this is a this is a record for me too. I don't I'm know so who Jerome would stay in. You know what? You don't know who what? I said I don't know what room I would stay in. There's, especially to sleep. There's no bed. <laughs> <laughs> this room was not designed exactly to accommodate to multiple you. people. Uh but you do know that you can bed. like there is a bed for me, there is a bed for Pip. <laughs> and the rest of you are adults. Figure it out. <laughs> Figure it out. No, we can go sleep on the lectern or something since she's so <laughs> old and wise. I guess if this is for sleeping, we have Just even a rooms. butt cushion of of of, of manuscripts. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a, a, a very nice bench out here. There you go. You guys have a fancy little place. <laughs> you can do it, Austin. <laughs> I believe in I'm you. Trying. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> trying so desperately to throw Pip onto the floor. Quit sleep. Oh! Oh yeah! What? <laughs> 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 was this? This is why you asked. Just so sudden. This is where cuddles can be. I was. I was so zoomed sorry. in like, I, all the way. <laughs> <and> then, <laughs> I I didn't mean for like. <laughs> <laughs> I have built up some accidental suspense. <laughs> oh god, it's facing you! It is approaching! Cuddles. Okay. Um, oh. One more thing. We talked about this last time. Brooke is taking this, the first uh, shift uh, to keep watch. Then there is <laughs> the Vamia. Uh, everybody else is either trancing or uh, just sleeping through the night. Uh, Pip. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> as this configuration of minis may or may not attest to, um, laying down with cuddles is far more comfortable than you would have imagined. Uh, the all these little pebbles that make that make up the exterior of her body, uh, they they shift very comfortably under your weight. It feels like a pillow that always takes on just the 
perfect shape to accommodate your head and, and shoulder. Uh, every once in a while, she uh, she will move, uh, she will flip around in one direction, uh, she'll get up and then curl up beside you. Uh, so, so as you're falling asleep, you're, you're kind of aware of her uh, and how she moves and uh, um, the the comfort that she that she seems to uh, be displaying in your presence uh, with you being able to understand her um, not uh, she doesn't bark this it's more of like this uh, um, sort of uh, you know when dogs sometimes uh, almost like sigh they just mm -hmm. let out the ears uh, uh, suddenly when they're comfortable and happy uh, and to you Pip to your ears that, that translates to I really like you I really like you too Cuddles I'm glad uh, that you found me. Yeah. I hate to think what would have happened if we hadn't. Mm. I'm going you? to sleep now. Okay. <laughs> Good night, Cuddles. Good night. Good night, John boy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Brooke, you, you watch Pip uh, just... Uh, fall asleep alongside this this weird dog you guys have picked up on the road. Um, I s it was squeak oh, over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, in like a, a basket thingy. Yeah, and squeak. He just looks over at Brooke and crosses his arms and says, "That used to be me." <laughs> <laughs> You'll get your turn, buddy. You'll get your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, are you doing anything in particular during during your watch? Uh, no. Okay, you're yeah, you're gonna be in this room, or you're going to be at, uh, outside with the constructs. Mm, you know what? I'll go outside. Okay. Uh in that case, I'm just going to place you. Uh, this is the first floor, so it's literally just a door here. Uh right here. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll your perception check. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay. Fifteen. Uh, outside, surrounding uh, your your tower. Uh, in in you're sort of currently into some um, uh, maybe storm is too strong of a word, but it's pretty windy outside and the dust is flying everywhere and it's making your throat itch and your eyes water. Um, completely unaffected by the dust are all the constructs that currently surround the tower you have summoned. Uh, they're spaced out somewhat regularly. You see that the owl bear machine is constantly just uh, circling the tower. Uh, keeping a watchful eye over you and your companions, uh, while the giant uh, mechanical snake, uh, snakes and the crabs uh, are just placed in a, like a, a, a one at each corner of the tower. Every once in a while, you hear this like far away uh, sound of gears and small engines and something that resembles the uh, the batting of wings, but the sound is a little off. And by now you're you're used to it. Uh, the mechanical ravens uh, every once in a while circle the tower whenever the wind calms down, and they uh, they roost every time that it picks up speed again. And the one thing that interrupts uh, your uh, otherwise uh, uh, uninteresting watch uh, about. Uh, Perhaps halfway through it, so about an hour um, after you you went uh, to to sit outside, uh, is Cuddles, uh, who very cautiously pushes uh, um, open the the door and uh, brings her just her snout through the entrance way, and um, she looks over in your direction in this almost timid manner. Oh? Do you need to pee? I'll reach out my hand to let him sniff. Or her. Um, she, she pauses for a few seconds and then she waddles over and sniffs Brooke's fingers. And 
parang you see her, her tail wagging in the universal dog body language of uh, comfort and happiness, and she sits down beside you. All right, I'll put just an arm on her and start scratching. And then just look in the sky. Wait for my shift to end. Mm-hmm. She seems quite content um, to just be in your company. Uh, she lays down pretty quickly. Lets you. Uh, she lets you touch her belly, and you two, like Pippa, get to experience just how weird, but uh, kind of we're nice in a in a in a strange and alien way um it is to touch an animal whose exterior just seems to be made of gravel that just keeps constantly shedding on you uh and yet somehow never quite seems to run out <laughs> you're an interesting creature i wonder how many of these things are you how many animals like you Like the ability to speak to her and understand her in a way that uh, um, oh, yeah, do. that Pip does, but uh, um, she, she she does that that thing where she's she's looking very intently, almost like she is trying to decipher uh, if you're asking something of her. A real well, animal handling check. I do have speech of beast and believe. Oh, so that's I, right. I, so if she do, can't do you want to use it? Yeah, of course. Uh, beasts and plants. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can always do it. You don't have to turn it on. Mm-mm. That's right, that's right. Oh, you yeah. can speak to them. Yeah, but, but I, you can't but understand can't. them. That's true. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Um, so, actually, to amend what I was explaining, she's looking at you like she's understanding uh, what you're saying. Um, also, her, t- her tail is going crazy. Is there a stick next to me? In Dustfall, there would be stone sticks lying around, yes. Good enough. I'll pick one up, put it in front of her face, and then just throw it. Um, she runs. Suddenly, this is the only thing that matters to her. <laughs> she, she's, um, just, she just zooms on over. <laughs> <clears throat> goes beyond where you can you can currently see in the dark and in the dust uh, and after a few seconds of not seeing her she comes back and she she seems to have not quite figured out how to like drop things once she retrieves them so she comes close to you and then sort of circles and lays down and starts biting on the stone stick I'll try to get it out wrestle with her oh yeah she does, she does she's not letting it up um, uh, Romy and I will handling check I was asking for you earlier. Okay. Ten. Okay. Um. You you bond with her for a little bit, uh, but she seems to tire rather quickly, or perhaps to just lose interest kind of quickly. Uh, so there was a few moments uh, of time during your watch where things were pleasantly just normal uh, and although the worries that are currently in your mind have uh, uh, yet to leave you uh, for at least a little bit you kind of had fun you found something nice in this strange continent that, and you got a little bit of joy out of it on a completely unrelated note uh, can I have mm. a constitution check not not um, just, sure. just a constitution check yep yep Okay. <clears throat> uh, spending a whole day outside in the dust, um, and now spending t- these extra couple of hours, it's um, it's definitely getting to you. You're definitely feeling like your throat is very itchy and dry. Uh, you can feel the exhaustion uh, building up from uh, the many days uh, of uh, walking. Uh, now roll a constitution saving throw. Help. Well, <laughs> nailed it. 
Did I lose the dog? <laughs> <laughs> Add it to the counter. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. After after tossing and uh, retrieving and then trying to uh, take from Cuddles this, this stick uh, and sitting back down and just thinking about how tired you feel and how difficult this uh, this journey thus far has been and just how many thoughts and worries have going through your mind. Um, at some point, you find yourself... Um, just drifting off. Uh oh. Um. Uh, Sid. Um. Devamia is hanging out uh, in the office. <clears throat> uh, she has put down her bedroll. Uh, sort of in, in in this corner over here. Um, and uh, she I is uh, sleeping. Um, and with her being this uh, seasoned traveler and adventurer, um, she sort of wakes up on her own. Uh, that skill that people other than me seem to, to, to have <laughs> sometimes, uh, when they still wake up and when the alarm didn't go off. <laughs> um, and she wakes up, and it's uh, she can still uh, she can see through the windows that it's the middle of the night, and uh, um, she feels like it's uh, well, it should be about time for her watch. Um, and as she's uh, um, rolling up her bedroll back up and just uh, um, preparing her weapons and getting ready for for Brooke to come get her at any minute um she she's going to hear this these sounds uh coming from the the trapdoor here in the corner um it, it this one I couldn't show it on the map but there's so there's this ladder that just goes from the very first floor all the way to the last one. Uh, so it's it's currently open and it requires like breaking up this uh, um, these these sections of leather and rolling them up in order to close any of these. So uh, at any one point, just keep that in mind. Uh, so she she hears these noises like something grabbing the ladder in a in a weird manner. Um, uh, Sid. Yeah. He hearing these biz bizarre noises, what would she do? Uh, yeah, I think her alert nature, her experiences, would definitely call her to immediately check out what this noise is. Okay. Uh, she quickly comes over, and uh, um, a little bit out of habit, uh, as she's going around the stable, she actually grabs uh, her axe. Uh, she doesn't really think that she'll necessarily need it. It's it's almost second instinct at this point. Uh, and when she comes over, she can see that uh, um, looking directly down, uh, Cuddles is just picture a dog of her size trying to make her way up a vertical ladder. Oh my um, god! <laughs> she she <laughs> looks like she's trying her very best, but she has her little uh, legs wrapped in uh, in very like the, the front ones they're wrapped uh, uh, sort of sideways around one edge of the ladder uh, and she's uh, hopping up and every once in a while she slips down a step uh, and loses a bit of progress and then she tries again and when she sees the Vamia, her her tail is um, wagging really fast so she's she's trying her best but she's not being very good at uh, joining her on her floor uh yeah the Vamia can understand cuddles right um, oh, Devami no. has a spell uh -huh. to, um, to be able to understand her. Yeah. I, I think this is a open. strange Oops. enough situation where it might call for that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just bringing up her uh, sheet real quick. Yeah, speak with animals. Oop. Imagine. 
Um, does that take an action to cast? Uh, yes. Okay, that's so. Um, so, uh, Devaime gets to work. Her ability to, to speak with animals is not uh, innate like Pips and Brooks. Uh, so, it just it takes her a moment, but she does like put down the axe to do so. Um, and uh, after, after moving her hands and uh, speaking uh, uh, a couple of arcane words, she'll uh, look back, back down at the dog. Um, what does she want to say to her? Hmm. Yeah, I think... So how far up the ladder is Cuddles? Like, is it close to the um, trap door at this point? or Three quarters of, of the way up. Okay. Would Devama be able to help Cuddles up from this? Because it seems really laboring to try to climb this ladder. So if <laughs> um, Devama could help, then probably try that. Let's see. Um, I go ahead and roll an athletics check. Devama would have to lie down on her belly. Yeah. For her, her arms to reach far enough to be able to pull up the dog. Mm -hmm. um, for her, it wouldn't be particularly difficult. Yeah, uh, easy enough. Uh, she puts, uh, after uh, freeing her hands, uh, she, she lays down and she manages to get like a very firm grasp on cuddles and just pull her up with her on this floor. Oop. Cuddles, uh, what are you playing at? Cuddles seems very satisfied to be up here and begins to run in a circle around Devamia, uh, as uh, as she says. Um, um, I was just bored. I wanted to see everybody. So you decided to climb this tall ladder to get here? I did a great job. I, I mean, I'm impressed. <laughs> But you also should be very quiet, because, you know, people are sleeping at night. I hope you didn't wake everyone up with that. No, I did not wake up anyone. Okay. Uh, what about Brooke? He, I thought he would have been here by now to... Um, Cuddles doesn't seem to quite understand, um something of what you said and she tilts her head to the side for a moment but then her tail begins to wag again uh, and she says he's outside keep him watch uh, outside the tower outside yes huh um yeah when Devamia left Brooke I imagine Brooke was still inside the tower yeah yeah uh, yeah, she is definitely, hmm, not yeah, apprehensive about that. Uh, so I think Devon will say, okay, Cuddles, stay here. I'm going to check out the, out the situation, okay? Alone? No. <laughs> I, so I don't like gonna to be alone. The, are you going to climb down this ladder all by yourself? Um, you could really hurt yourself, you know? You help me? Yeah, how easy would that be for Devamia to you know, like hold calls in one of her hands? Or I, I don't know, how would you do this? This seems tough. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be the simplest thing. Uh no. <coughs> The Bami's experience handling a wyvern. Um, so yeah, she feels like she might, she should be able to keep Cuddles calm while uh, maneuvering around with her, but it, it would be a little bit, uh, uh, it wouldn't be the easiest thing to carry her up or down the ladder. Yeah, I imagine so. <sighs> yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, the Bami will just let him a deep sigh and. Okay, we'll try this. No guarantees. And yeah, try to somehow finagle this giant axe and a dog while climbing down a ladder. I don't know um, how this is going to <laughs> When When Navame is like reaching to grab Cuddles, Cuddles starts running. 
<laughs> she goes in a circle around the table. Uh, she's doing a thing where she's keeping the front of her body very low and her butt up high. Uh, and to, to Devamia's ears, she's saying, Aha! You can't catch me! You're right. I can't catch you. And uh, we will just start climbing on the ladder. No, immediately. wait! No! Devami <laughs> <laughs> um, like turns around and steps backward down the ladder and steps down a couple of steps before Cuddles is already back uh, in front of the trapdoor. And uh, uh, she's going... She, she's going to gently put her mouth around uh, one of her wrists, directly just at the base of the hand. Uh, so the teeth are, like, closing in enough so that the hand can't slip through, but she's not biting down in, in, in a way that would actually hurt the wrist. Um, and through the, like, mouthful of uh, wrist, uh, <laughs> Cuddles says, No, wait, don't go! It's my time to take watch, Cuddles. This is better be important. No, it's, it's not time yet. What do you mean? It, it's not time yet. Stay with me. Let's play a game. <sighs> Cuddles, we will have... Hours of play as long as we get downstairs down this tower. Got it? Um, Carol's just maintains her grip on the mummy's wrist. Cuddles, play nice. Okay, we saved you, remember? We brought you here to a safe place. Um, roll another animal handling check. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair. <laughs> okay. That's why we don't have uh, animals. <laughs> candles, uh, candle, why am I unable to say the word cuddles today? <laughs> candles? <laughs> Cuddles <laughs> maintains. <laughs> that would be the strangest dog. Kennel dog. <coughs> uh, Cuddles maintains her grip on the mummy's wrist. Uh, and it's just repeating all over. Uh, she, she really seems to want the mummy to stay up here. Okay. Uh... I think Devamia is going to grab the... Yeah, I, believe, I imagine she would have this. Uh, the water skin she has on her pouch and would, like, throw that to the side of the cor uh, cor uh, the other corner of the room. Go fetch! <laughs> uh -huh. Good idea, good try, but Cuddles doesn't seem interested. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Um, her bite is beginning to, um, <laughs> to to get to get a little bit tighter, and she's beginning to actively pull back, uh, trying to get the Vamya back up. With that, I think the Vamya is actually going to use force to try to yeah just grip her hand out of uh, Carlos's reach and try okay. to climb up. Uh, let's make this a contested, like, uh, check, like, as if you were trying to, you are basically trying to get yourself out uh, of a grapple. Of a um, mouth grapple? You have a bite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can roll your choice of acrobatics and athletics while Cuddles will roll uh, athletics. <laughs> uh oh. You lost your hand. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> that that would be interesting, but unfortunately, I rolled a six. <gasps> oh. Um, so, uh, with with the Vamia being like a couple of steps down the ladder and merely having the top part, uh, um, the top half of her body, uh, still on this floor, um, 
She reaches down in order to secure her weapon um, on on like her her belt on her hip, uh, and then with with her hands free, well, one hand free, sorry. <clears throat> she sort of like she does a thing where she pries open the mouth of the dog and she slips her other hand away before uh, Carlos can uh, manage to bite back. Uh, and the, I mean, with, with her newfound freedom, she slides down the ladder, uh, landing ah, here in this corner, uh, directly in front of a sleeping Pip and a sleeping Squeak. Uh, both of them immediately uh, apparent uh, to her that uh, uh, something is horribly wrong with them. Uh, as of Pip and Squeak, there is only a stone statue left behind. Uh, cuddles a bark statue? from above. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and what do Cuddles do? Uh, cuddles upstairs is uh, barking uh, as as Evam is sliding down the the, le the ladder, and she's saying, "Wait, wait, 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 wait! Come back!" Uh, and then she stops barking when she sees Evam just landing all the way down to the bottom. And there's no sight of Brooke. There is just this stone statue. Uh, correct. Uh, yeah, she will definitely take a quick peek at the statue if, if there's anything uh, unusual about it. Uh, I'll roll an investigation check. What is happening? Oh, well, that's not the sign for that. <laughs> You have like some some audio coming through, Dennis. What kind of audio? Uh, it's like fan noise that's high enough to activate yeah. your mic, so then we can hear like your mouse scrolling and stuff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's just something is activating your microphone, so whenever it's activated, we just hear everything. Like you nerve. Um, what the Bobby can see is that these are just life-sized replicas of. Uh, Pip and Squeak, respectively, uh, with Pip wrapped uh, um, around and over these bags of flour, <clears throat> and Squeak comfortably uh, uh, just depicted as in sleeping this little tray thing. Um, they're very detailed. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world is up with this magical tower? I don't get it. Uh, I will definitely, yeah, now start to look around for actual Pip and Brooke and Squeak. Is there any signs of movement at all? Uh, uh, going any... off of your previous investigation check, uh, yeah. absolutely no idea what it might yeah. be. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, yeah, Cuddle said outside tower, so I guess the mommy would check outside tower. Okay. If possible. And the Vami will just... Uh, uh, she doesn't really have to open the door. It's already partially uh, agape. Uh, and she, she sticks her head out and she can see that Brook is um, not where anywhere where she can see him. But she can see a, a stone statue of Brook uh, that just depicts him sitting next to the door uh, on the outside part of the tower. Uh, sitting down and with his head a little bit on, on the side towards one of his shoulders as if he, he's uh, uh, sleeping. Uh, okay, yeah, I imagine she would probably arrive at the same conclusion with that investigation role. And yeah, she would poke her head outside the door and like shout out, Brooke! Are you there? Uh, while there is no response from Brooke, uh, Pontifex can roll a, a perception check um, to see if uh, the army's voice wakes him up. Uh, and uh, do one for, for the Tressim too. And uh, uh, Virion... Virion also gets a check. Perception. Wait, um, Vera is outside, technically. Uh, as long as, like, Devamia this is storm isn't outside. too... Uh, yeah, no, I'd say that Virion can hear Devamia. 
Uh, and, and to her, instead of like hearing her through the various trap doors, so she would just hear her as being like at the base of the tower, oh which goodness. would be down here. Uh, well, that's both Pontifex and the Tresim in order. Yeah, both Pontifex <laughs> and the Tresim uh, are woken up by Devamia's voice, kind of far away, and it doesn't sound like she's calling for, for either of you, uh, but it's it's loud enough that uh, um, yeah, it, it bothers you, and you can drift off uh, out of sleep. Uh, uh, go check it out. I will, uh, I will just look. Uh, and Pontifex is going to, uh, lay back where he was before, uh, and I'm gonna use the, the find familiar thing to perceive through the familiar. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, he's gonna about? send the dress up, like, go see what's up. I don't want to move. Yeah. <laughs> that is, oh, I want that superpower. Oh, no. And he'll, uh, like, what? I don't know, mage hand, his little six-fingered mage hand to open up this little trap door or something yeah, if it, he has to. It's already open, yeah, uh, during the night. Okay. It's, cool. it's open and connects all the all doors. Oh, what I about feel like maybe Pontifex would, by choice or by request of everyone else, keep oh, this shut because this whole <laughs> thing in here is just, like, completely <laughs> fogged and steamed out just to keep the humidity <laughs> from all the rest of the rooms. And he has no clothes on. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he cares less about that, but maybe again by request. Okay. <laughs> what about Virion? Assuming like this isn't like a gotta climb on top of the wall, she would probably just look over to see if she could see what's going on down there. Mm -hmm. uh, she would be able to see uh, that Devamia is facing like directly in front of the tower, and it's just called for Brook's name. And you can also see you are like a. a reasonable height up ahead and so the dust is already making it difficult to even see the ground but you do see, see this shape next to the door <clears throat> gray and rocky that you don't remember being being there earlier um after a few seconds of squinting uh, it's weird it kind of looks like a statue and you can see the hair and the shield and it looks like a brook <laughs> Well, regardless of that statue situation, just hearing Vanya shouting, uh, Viren would go check it out. We'd just head down the ladder, head downstairs. Okay, yeah, she'll she'll open this door, and then uh, the the trap door earlier was re uh, requested by uh, Pontifex to be kept shut, but it, it's been hours, and you just whatever, whatever. Uh, you need to go this check is, this out. So <laughs> this is important. Yeah. So you, you open it up and there's a bunch of steam that immediately begins to escape and like the difference in temperature between the room below you and this one is quite significant. Um, and you can see that at the same time that you're, that you're opening this trap door, uh, the one directly in the, on the floor below is being opened by seemingly just this, uh, um, this force, this magical force. And then you see the, uh, a white uh, tressim, uh, winged cat, uh, just stretch and quiver a little bit and then uh, stick her head uh, through the trapdoor as if to, to look what's going on, mimicking your own uh, uh, gesture. And then she uh, she's going to just uh, stretch her wings and fly down. As Virian goes down the ladder, is Pontifex like obviously awake or is he snoozing still? Uh, well, he's, he's laying in the tub uh, like uh, like Geralt of Rivia style, like you know, feet kind of <laughs> up, up on the edge, hanging out, uh, and he yeah, like his his eyes are closed and his head is leaned back onto the thing. He looks like he's out. I mean, the audience knows that he's he's it, perceiving yes. through his familiar, but yeah, he looks uh, he does not respond to you whatsoever. Yeah, she's just gonna keep going. Just turn back in the ladder, shake her head, and then just continue on her way down. Uh, down in the office room, um, as Viren is sliding down the ladder, she would see that uh, uh, Cuddles is up here now, uh, and she is uh, she is roughly over here compared to the to the trap door, uh, and she is just very intensely looking. When when Viren arrives, uh, her her attention snaps to her. Uh, the tail is still, and the dog seems kind of tense uh the the tressim is uh, 
uh, flying just a couple of feet off the, the floor on here and looking around and Pontifex is seeing the same thing. A cuddles is here in the otherwise empty room. Strange place for a dog. Um, Virion and Pontifex see Cuddles sit down. Uh, and she's sitting down where? Uh, right here. Like on, on the corner of this carpet. Okay. Um, the Tressim seems very unhappy uh, with, uh, with the presence of, uh, of yeah. the dog. Um, she, she has been pretty annoyed ever since you guys have uh, picked Cuddles up. <laughs> I don't know uh, if Virian's even seen the Tressum. I don't know. Oh, How often does point. like Pontifex even bring bring her back? Uh, like, it's you... very rare. Alright. This might be one of the first times. He just happened to have Tressum. her with him at this point, but for the most part, he just leaves the Tressum alone and she tends to just like fly off and go god knows where uh in her little journeys. Okay, so as long as you were in cat. As long as you weren't keeping her in like her own little pocket dimension, then Vera yeah, would no, have no, occasionally. No, yeah, then she would have seen the, the trust me every once in a while coming okay. and snatching up some food and then leaving again. Um, she has never sought affection from Virion or anyone else, really. <laughs> True. He's that cat that your friend has that you only see when it, you know, wants food. Yeah, but you know they have a cat. Food. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Virion, you're alone with two pets. <laughs> <clears throat> this might be the closest you've ever gotten to the Tressim. Uh, and you, you glance at the winged cat for a moment, uh, uh, unknowingly making eye contact with Pontifex. Uh, and when <laughs> both of you bring your attention back on Carlos, you, can, you, you hear a little plink. <clears throat> and the collar that she was wearing around her neck has fallen to the ground and has just hit the floor um, <clears throat> in a part where the, that's not covered by the carpet. I don't think Varian would pay much notice to this. There is somebody calling outside, so I think that's where her yeah. focus is. Yeah, and I don't think the Pontifex cares about this dog, frankly, and definitely the Tressum doesn't either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Varian slides further down the, the ladder, uh, and a few seconds later the Tressum flies down. Uh, both of you landing here in the kitchen, and just like the Vame before you, Varian, you see... Um, a, a stone version of a Pip and another one of Squeak just immediately directly in front of you as soon as you land here. Um, the Tressim kind of pretty nonchalantly just lands on the table. Uh, the Vamia is here near the, en uh, near the entrance and is, uh, seems to have just stepped in. Uh, oh, hey, uh, good thing you're here. Something weird is going on. Uh, yeah, I heard you uh, calling from Upstairs, uh, this is new. Um, she'll take a look at the air quote statue here. Yeah, never seen those before, and I can't find Brooke or Pip anywhere. Any any extra information that Virion can get from? Virion can roll her own investigation check. Okay. Is there anything invisible in this room ah um the tressim would not see anything invisible in this room okay 15 um viren these uh, uh these these statues are exceptionally lifelike uh, everything that you remember of both pip and squeak uh, including squeak's uh, uh, strange new, new metal armor uh pip's dolls uh, uh, he, his clothes, the way, all these little um, tokens that he keeps in his hair, everything is identical to Pip. This, this, this is Pip. This, this is Squeak. They both have appeared to have been petrified. Oh, strange. I didn't um, hear, hear anything going in and out. Is there anything poisonous around? The Tressum can smell it. Uh, specifically trying to smell for us a rogue squeak. Um, there is nothing poisonous in this kitchen. Hmm. You can't find a uh, brook either. 
No, not one of those statues, though. Right outside. Yeah, let me go take a look at that. Uh, I fear it's probably the same thing. She'll go take a look at the brook statue. Uh, yep. This also looks too lifelike um, to just be a statue. Uh, can you help me get him inside. I don't think we should leave it out in this sandstorm, but uh, it seems something has uh, petrified them. They're these aren't statues, not in uh, the wait. The these are them. Yeah, them. Something I've, I've heard of this happening before. I've never encountered it myself, but I know there's magic and things like that that can do this to people. But, but what? what? How is it just them? We shouldn't be in this kitchen. Are there any, like, tracks in the sand that seem like an unfamiliar thing? Uh, roll a survival check. I'm going to preface this with saying Varian is good at the water, not at land. <laughs> um, the the way that this this landscape is all consistently covered in this thick layer of dust would uh, normally make it easy to spot something, but perhaps because of the storm, um, most of the tracks have been have been erased. So she sees like the group um, uh, footprints that lead up to the door that are very very faded already, uh, and she spots nothing unusual, no additional or strange kind of footprints. Just shake her head and hey, let's let's get him inside first and then we can assess. Is there any anything else strange that you might have encountered before we met? I don't uh, recall. Yeah, that, that new dog. Something's up with that new dog. I don't know what, but seemed like didn't want to be down here. Well, I mean, you've heard like the first uh, third of the conversation, you missed the one that took place outside, and now you're hearing this again. Yeah, I did think it was strange that the, the dog was on the second floor. I don't think I've ever seen a dog climb a ladder before. No, me neither. Yeah, Pontifex is going to zone back out of the tressum and miss the continuing conversation. <laughs> so he's going to climb out of this thing and like throw his robe on and nothing else and climb down okay um, I'm sure he takes a while because he's old but you know <laughs> alright so he's not putting on his armor just grabbing yeah no not the, the armor just okay, he's just grabbing like his okay yeah I don't even okay. think he's putting on shoes <laughs> he's just coming down in the in the does robe have, does he have webbed feet probably uh, let me check <laughs> you see your notes no, if I have a swim oh, okay. speed, then yes. I don't think I do. Uh, no, no, he doesn't. Okay. No. All right. Get yeah, a scientific way to answer my, my silly question. Yep. All right. Yeah, don't you know, everything with a swim speed has webbed feet. What are the, the, the Virion um, <laughs> talking about? <laughs> what the what? Uh, the the Vamia and, and Virion. And <laughs> okay. We have a we have a name together yeah. now. Apparently, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, Virion. I don't know any like de stonifying magic, but I can try interrogating that mud. I feel like God knows something about what's happened here tonight. It, it's a the dog. I mean, strange dog, but it's a dog. I don't know. I've seen a lot of weird stuff on my travels here in the Daria. Yeah, I would not be surprised if there's something up with that dog, too. I mean, you're more experienced on this front than I am. It's sure, certainly the first time I've seen anything like that. And seeing that uh, Pip was able to speak with it, and... It just seemed like a dog, like, very much like a dog to me, except for, you know, the stone gravel thing. Appearances can deceive you. Uh, and uh, 
like these statues. Apparently not statues, I learned. Um, yeah, is there anything you can do? Have you seen this stuff before? I've heard of it, never come across it, and healing has ever been my forte, at least not of this nature. I can uh, patch up a, a wound, but not the magic. Okay. There might be some magic stuff in this tower. Maybe you can... There's some info about it here? I don't know. That would be the first place to look. I'll try talking to that doggy at first. Just see if there's anything we can learn. Okay. Um, Devami, roughly the, uh, at the time when she's climbing up the ladder uh, would be about a time when Pontifex is climbing down. Um, and so the both of them kind of simultaneously, Devami is sticking her head up on on this floor uh, and Pontifex having climbed the most uh, like w- down with the entirety of his body so that he gets vision uh, into the office. Uh, both of you can see Cuddles still sitting down on this part of the of the office. Um, no uh, um, y- your attention however is not really drawn to her. It is drawn to the creature that is beside her. Uh, something that neither of you have ever seen before um a creature with uh, a kind of snake like body um or perhaps more similar to a worms but big bigger than cuddles bigger than any of you um with a particularly big round mouth and multiple almost human like arms uh, extending out of it and i need uh, everybody to roll the initiative right now cool oh god <laughs> why <laughs> Everybody, including me. Uh, since you guys are on the battle map, you will have to. Okay. But it's uh, not going to be very uh, oh, necessary. What the hell is that? Our friend Cuddles. He slithers through dust. From the upside down. I'm gonna for for to make it th- this easy. I'm gonna put Pontifex and the bomb. Yeah, here. Boop. Uh, boop. Perfect. Oh, that should be a 19. Sure. Uh, where's the Tressie? Yeah. Is that mine? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Tressie's there. Am I dumb or am I, did I lose the thing to set my initiative? Oh, yeah, I don't have the health bar. Oh, my bad. Here you go. Yay. Also, just because I'm still not at full health, we didn't long rest, but what would he have? We would we have had a short rest so I could get some more. Uh, Viren does, because Viren only needs four hours of wait. No, we are. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a short rest, and nobody has a long rest. Okay, um, okay but and we the do short, have a short rest, rest applies. Uh, yes, the short uh, the short rest applies to to all of you minus Brooke. I'm taking my short rest right now. In statue form? Yep. <laughs> well, can't move, might as well sleep. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Right? Where did you find this thing? That model's amazing. It is pretty cool. Sorry, I brought home a monster. It's Look okay. what I'm Can we keep Surely. him? Can we keep him? Surely we'll learn from this. I still kind of want to keep him. <laughs> but apparently she's a he? Liar. 
<laughs> you didn't check. She said she was the goodest girl. Uh, Pip Pip has spent time with her and has cuddled with her and would know for a fact that she's a she. Okay. But she has a habit of turning into a worm demon. No, both of these are here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're not one and the same. Yeah, they're by each other. In the for, some, mm -hmm. for some reason, I thought it metamorphed into a worm <laughs> demon. <laughs> what a <laughs> Uh, the the tressim currently down in the kitchen, um, and with the uh, the potential of being in contact with with Pontifex. So, uh, yeah, what, what is she up to at this thing. moment? Uh, yeah, what, if this thing comes into into being or whatever, uh, yeah, he's here Pontifex when is... Pontifex and the Vamia arrive. Uh, then yeah, uh, the the Tressum would know. Uh, this is a, a okay. shared thing of you know, uh, danger um, problem. All right. Uh, in, in that case, I'm just uh, since she would like know what is happening with Pontifex, I'm going to just go ahead and describe uh, uh, what Pontifex and Devamia feel at this particular moment, uh, as mm -hmm. when they when they lay their eyes on this strange worm like creature. Um, for both of them. There is this sense of uh, information washing over their very minds. Uh, and uh, they feel emotions that aren't theirs. They, they, they perceive them like they would hear a sound from a particular direction, somewhere outside of themselves. Uh, they feel this uh, uh, sensation of... Uh, um, of knowledge of what this creature calls himself. They know that his name is uh, he's slithers through dust. And I also have this uh, feeling like he knows Pontifex and Devamia's names. Uh, and in addition to this, they, they perceive this, this sense, this exterior sense of uh, hunger. Ah. Uh, with this out of the way, what uh, would the Tressum like to do? Uh, the Tressum is going to uh, fly over to Brooke uh, and like actually like bite down or like grab on to to his man bun uh, and try and start like hugging and like flapping her wing she's kind of spazzing out a little bit but she is she is grabbing brooke by the hair uh and is trying to pull towards the ladder uh mm -hmm. for a moment and then is going to let go and fly up the ladder okay um well there is well, really you know, no hair to cat meow sounds all right there, there's really no hair to grab here uh just the the, the surface of brooke's head um is like weirdly smooth now um, mm. and so her, her claws are like tapping against this stone like uh, uh, exterior, uh, making a sound that Virion would very Virion would very yeah, clearly. She's hear trying to get Virion's attention. This is yeah. this is basically nails on a on a blackboard. Yeah. Uh-huh. What's that to me uh, following well? She's gonna uh, fly up the <laughs> ladder, like <laughs> you know, clamorously flap the she's she's flying as fast as she can, so like, you know, maybe maybe leaving some feathers behind her. Or really flailing up this thing. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's arriving uh, uh, in in this room or going further up? Uh, no, uh, to this room. Uh, and Cuddles is not there, right? No, she is. She's here. Oh. She's sitting here. Uh. Oh hell. Uh. Okay, yeah, I think the Tressum is going to... Oh, I don't think I've ever actually used the Tressum in combat. Yep. I... I think you're right. I think so. uh, like, I, the Tressum has, like, flown around in the blood goop room, the weird heart things, to find Devamia, but that was it. Uh, okay, then, yeah, how, how tall is this room? Um, hmm, does the spell say Ernst Tower 
Each level of its tower is 10 feet tall. Oh, okay. There we go. Perfect. Uh, and this creature is, you know, floor to ceiling, I'm assuming. Uh, if so, then yeah, never yeah. mind. Yeah, the Tresum is going to continue up uh, to the... To room number three, to the spa. Home sweet home. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the Tresum is going to uh, try to grab... Uh, uh, Pontifex's um, is he wouldn't have left the orb, so it's gonna it's gonna try to grab Pontifex's staff. Okay. Um... So it's like five, ten, fifteen, twenty, so thirty to get to this room. He has forty feet, so another ten feet of movement to get up to this room. So I guess she's gonna dash over to where his staff would be, and then pick it up. Um, considering the size of the staff and the strength of the Tresim, um, she can't, like, lift it all the way. It has to drag on one end. So as yeah, she, like, she'll, picks like, up one try end, to grab it and drag it and, like, as it's getting dump dragged. it down this. Yeah. She's gonna just try to dump it down this hole. Okay. Uh, um, so that's maybe, just going... might be able to do that. Like, I'm going to count, like, uh, the... Um... Like, she... she, she made the noise and Brooke flew up and then flew up uh, this room and she's now dragging the staff and also dropping it. I'd say like she, like she has dragged it almost all the way to the trapdoor, but to let it go, um, that's just okay. gonna be like next round. Just to okay, finish cool. the action. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Uh, then... And, you know, she's still like, letting Pontifex know that the stick is coming. The stick is coming. She <laughs> fetches better than Carlos does. Uh, Virion, it's your turn. Uh, this winged cat has just made an infernal ruckus and left a few scratches on Brooke's hair. Hmm. Uh, what would you I'll like probably, to do? I'll buff out. Uh, she is going to follow the distressed cat sounds because things are weird. And just, uh... See. Uh. Yeah. Sam, okay. assuming is Devanya up on the ladder? There there is some traffic currently on this ladder. This is around the time when Pontifex is climbing down and the Vami is climbing up. Um, and since the the Tresim has like jumped into action and has uh, ah, gotten her attention, this would be roughly the same time when the Vami is pulling her, like, herself all the way into this room. Um, as long as Viri so, can get like eyesight into the room. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because it, like so, she takes up the actual ladder space at this moment, and the mama can be here. Okay, because then we're gonna bonus action and use our blessing of the shrouded wolf to bamf into the room proper. Okay. Uh, blessing of the who? Shrouded wolf. Ah, okay. Because yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And she'll just kind of like, what, what the hell? And all hells is this? And she'll spear out. Uh, spear out. That's wrong character. Uh, Rip your outs, shield mm -hmm. outs, <laughs> and she will. Uh, she will attack it because this is big and scary. Uh, okay. Um, with with what weapon? A uh, rapier. Got it. Um. Okay. Thanks for the roll, but a moment before nope. we deal with it. Uh, I, was, I was a little too late, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, so when she too arrives into the room and she lays uh, her eyes on this creature, she also gets that sensation. Um, one, of hunger. Two, of knowing his name and uh, him knowing hers. Um, with, with every step closer that she takes to this creature, she can feel... His presence in in a strange internalized manner, uh, like she's approaching something bigger than what she can see, um, and there is this discomfort as she gets uh, closer and closer. Uh, does she want to to proceed? She teleported. She did the the misty like step in thing. In this specific spot. Yep. Okay then. Um, that's right, okay. In that case, um, click, click, 
This is the wrong place, sorry. I have too many tabs open. Who knew? Uh, before you attack, I need you to roll a d10. Okie dokie. Okay. Uh, appearing right next to this creature whose, whose name she just instinctively seems to know. Um, she feels just her, her mind uh, filled with all sorts of strange, uh, uh, discording thoughts and, and feelings, and it stuns her for a moment. Um, you can't move or take actions from now on. Uh, so that attack will not take place. Not go. Oh, that's cool. Love that. Uh, and Pontifex and Devabian would, like, see Viruna first appear, like, uh, e e in in a manner that is very natural to her, she lands very softly. It doesn't trip over her own feet or anything. But like the moment she tr straightens her posture, um, like a an instant after she appears, uh, she just immediately brings her hands up to her head, and she seems to be just experiencing this terrible headache. Mm. Uh, so we're going to leave Vir in there, and we're mm. going to leave Brooke and Squeak, and the go to the Bamia. Uh, yeah, I think the vomit in a hurry would not have brought the longbow. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I don't think that would have made sense, sadly. In which case, it would be on the table. Oh. Okay. Uh, so I think yeah. I said earlier, like, she picked up her bow while she went around the table. Um, and, like, her bedroll was over here, so I'd say her other belongings, like her other weapon or anything that was too big to take with her would be, uh... On, on this table here in the middle. Okay, yeah, then she was definitely trying to go to grab that. Okay, from here she can she can reach him. Okay. Uh, is that an action to get the items, or...? Uh, no, that's an interaction. Okay. Uh, yeah, then let's try to fire this bow at this weird thing. Uh, God, okay. A, a dirty 20 hits. Slithers through dust, huh? Why don't you slither through the door, huh? Get <laughs> out of here! <laughs> nice, you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell that eldritch abomination over <laughs> the time itself. <laughs> <laughs> That's nine, and okay. then... Can do two attacks, so let's roll one more time. Are you adding the extra four for Virian being there? Oh! And yeah, oh, that would make right. the 13 damage. A 26 okay. hits. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I forgot about the bonus damage. It's so good. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, because that hit, we will also. Uh, mark that as the favorite foe, which means increasing it with d6. Uh, like so. 14 damage. Okay. Uh, and then as a bonus action, uh, yeah, I forgot to do this, so I'll do it now. I'll just use Hunter's Mark. To mark it as the bomb is quarry, and that will be an end of turn. Okay. Uh, that brings us to Cuddles. Um, who seems to be to be having a, a grand time. Uh, she's sitting comfortably on this side of the room and just wagging her tail, seeing more and more people join in. Uh, the bomb is finally back, uh, and then you can see. Uh, the, the, he slithers, so doesn't seem to have eyes proper. Uh, but you guys see see him just like twisting his body a little bit, uh, as if he was looking at uh, at Kados, and Kados, uh, uh, Kados' attention is on him. Uh, and then she stands up, and uh, uh, she is going to uh, very just nonchalantly uh, move. Uh, behind this creature uh, and I'll just be like 
shifting her. Oh. Down on the floor. Abishi. She's now on, on this space. And uh, watching what is happening. Pontifex. Uh, Pontifex is going to stay next to to this thing, ready to to the to the thing, ready to you know catch a staff whenever it eventually comes. But for now, um, he is going to. Do I know if this thing affecting Virian is magic? Because she just rushed up to it and then immediately started suffering a headache. Yeah. Um, considering what Pontifex is currently feeling going on through his mind, uh, he feels this, this sort of... Um, sort of bond uh, between his mind and his creatures um, and he, he can feel that this bond sort of shifts as Pontifex is uh, moving his, his weight back and forth between his legs uh, whenever he sticks his head to look up at the, at the tressum and see if the staff is coming um, mm -hmm. so I, I'd say that he can sense that uh, um, this is this effect is not magical um you know, in the same way that like a dragon's fire breath isn't magical, uh, like it's a, mm -hmm. it's a natural kind of effect, even if it uh, resembles magic in, in in what it does. Um, so no, he he the seeing Virin's example, he would not like keep his distance, and that there is uh, really no magic at play here. Uh, okay, then. Uh, if there's no magic at play, then he's going to go full panic. Uh, I'm going to cast Flaming Sphere, uh, and I'm upcasting uh, to fourth level, um, which means I can't change the damage type up. Uh, so he's just... I think this is the first time ever, actually. Uh, yeah, throw up a full... A full ball of flame. I throw uh, fire. Yeah, and <laughs> oh, oh, I'll just lock it. <laughs> uh, this thing, and then uh, bonus action to smash it into uh, the slithery. It's fine. I he has control over the fire. It's a ball. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh... When you move the sphere conductor, the sphere ignites flammable objects not being worn or carried. Uh, so yeah, maybe this table is ig ignited. And the rug under it. <laughs> is it... Does it float? I guess not. Yeah, yeah. we talked about it once because it can't really clear gaps. Um... It has, I think it has a fixed well, it distance from the ground. Or it can? Yeah, it can. Uh, it can It can uh, make jumps. Uh, it can go over barriers up to five feet tall and can jump across pits up to ten feet wide. Okay, then... Uh, oh, hmm. I, I thought if it's the vertical height... Uh, um. Yeah, it can, it can... I can direct it over barriers up to five feet tall. Okay, so that would be like it can be up to five feet off the ground. Yeah. Uh, so he doesn't have to touch. Okay, there you go. He's gonna table. he's gonna try to prevent as much of this study being on fire as possible. But uh, at the moment, uh, this is this is far more concerning. Mm -hmm. uh, and honestly, what could what could Aaron possibly know that Pontifex doesn't? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what does he think he is? Uh, and then yeah, I'm gonna bonus action smash the sphere into the thing. So uh, DC 16 deck save. Sphere. Yeah, which it'll stay in this same space, but, you know, mechanically. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> what save? Uh, DC 16 dexterity save. Okay, marvelous. Eight. And these... Ooh. There's not a lot. Uh, 13 points of fire damage. Okay. Uh, your very controlled, very contained sphere 
um, precisely floats over the table. Uh, and no sparks reach anything that is currently on it or the table itself. Uh, and instead it hits as if it has a physical form uh, into this creature, leaving behind a, um, on, its, on its hairless skin this very obvious burnt mark. Uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, perfect. Uh, no, Pontifex is going to stay here ready to, to catch a staff, but that's it. Um, oh, actually, I think he's going to he is gonna tell Dev uh, Devami would know uh, the don't end your turn next to this thing. And Devami has seen him use this before, so <laughs> it right, doesn't matter okay. if you start your turn near this. Don't yeah, end the, your turn within five feet of the orb. The first gotcha. time you fight, you, you guys uh, uh, met beneath a still in mm -hmm. dread. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the ball was in play. <laughs> the ball is always in play. <laughs> It is sort of my calling card at this point. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so it's uh, uh, his leathers. Uh, the z turn <laughs> uh, and as this feeling of hunger is wash washing over everybody uh, barely interrupt for interrupted for a moment by this uh, sensation of pain uh, when it is burned by Pontifex's spell uh, he then begins to move using his arms and very human like hands uh, to drag himself across the uh, the floor um uh, oh, hey, no, actually, that's not enough of a size difference to go through. Did he not go through the crew? I guess not. Okay, he doesn't have to go anywhere. Uh, he's just going to um, start eating Virion. Yay. Um, what we rolled earlier... Okay, you're not uh, uh, you're not stunned in the sense of the stunned condition. You just missed out on your turn. Uh, so there are no, like, extra advantages or anything to these attacks but uh this very 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 big mouth with teeth uh is uh, just going to attempt to um get a bite out of you so the first attack is a 24 to hit yes and the second is an 11 that misses Uh, for a total of 11 slashing damage. Uh, okay. As this, uh, this creature is beginning to, to nibble on Virion, and Virion can feel that, uh, um, like, simultaneously the pain of being bitten, uh, and also the uh, this creature's pleasure in finally eating something. Uh, we don't have to worry about Pip, so what about the Tressim? Is it staff time? Uh, uh, Tressim is going to try to, uh, you know, uh, lower the staff uh, to what she can, uh, just enough for, for Pontifex to be able to grab it. Uh, Pontifex basically, like, um, catches it as the Tressim accidentally ends up dropping it. Uh, but it was already almost in his hands, and he just closes his fingers, and here it is. You are reunited. And boom, my AC bumps. <laughs> my <laughs> what? Uh, and, yeah, then the I think the Tressum is then going to go back down to the kitchen where the statues are. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just going to stay there for now and basically plan to alert Pontifex if anything changes down here. Okay. That's it. Uh, Virion, we're going All to right. open up with a D10. Okay. Uh, okay, followed by a d8. I don't like this. Uh, 
Uh, okay. Uh, Virion, to, to you it felt like you lost uh, a couple of seconds of time. Um, and by the time you sort of come through, you have run up against this wall uh, and ended up bumping into it. And I sort of like, um, I wish you didn't. Like, uh, oh, well, you're on the floor. You're not on the wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the, the, the shock of hitting your face against the wall kind of brings you back to reality. Uh, the point of fact just saw her like turning around and running in the opposite direction, just face first into the wall. Uh, but the rest of your turn... Uh, is is for you to take. So all you did was take 10 feet of movement uh, down this way. Okie dokie. Uh, uh, your mind clears a little bit. Virian just shakes off the embarrassment from just smacking her face into the wall, shakes her head a little bit, turns back around, and she will drop her rapier and just whip out the pistol and take a shot. It's pistol time, okay? Pistol time. Pistol uh, there's time. just a loud bang boom pontifex slight ptsd flashbacks <laughs> uh yeah i think he like has his his staff and he's focusing on that and he's like oh this is better and then boom and like, <laughs> <laughs> 17 hits are the walls of stone in here um <laughs> Since uh, they have been, the tower has been built in dustfall today. Yes, it would be mainly stone. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> this is like an echo chamber. You stupid! <laughs> 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 oh. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, you know, I use thunder magic, so like maybe it's fine, yeah. but rude. <laughs> I forgot how much damage I done. My gun did. Here we go. Thirteen points 13. of damage. I can't get any closer to it. <laughs> uh, the the bullet uh, ends up just entering into this creature's body and uh, not coming out. Uh, there's there's blood seeping through the hole that is left behind. And we're gonna stay there. Uh, no, actually, we're gonna up on the table. Up on the table. No, you the knock table. over a few like uh, <laughs> ink bottles and papers. Uh, math, my five. Back over here. And that will be my turn. Uh, when, when hit by the, the projectile, there's a bunch of dust that sort of like falls off of uh, uh, his slithers, uh, and, it, and it's uh, it's making a mess of the floor. Uh, Brook, squeak, Devamia. Uh, yeah, so Devamia, after seeing Mr. Slithers having nibbled on Virion, uh, <laughs> she'll take a step back against the wall. <laughs> And say, hey, no night snacking! And then shoot an arrow through <laughs> the fire sphere uh, and see if that does anything. <laughs> Let us go. Uh, hmm. It doesn't have to do anything, but. That's no, what but you that do. is pretty cool. It can. If you hit, you can toss on a d4 or fire damage. All right, let's go. Uh, let's see. That all depends on whether it. <laughs> sure. Does. So, yeah. uh, Epimus Virian's gonna be like, click now. It's distracted, and we'll use her re relentless assaults so you can remake that roll. Oh, amazing! Thank you. Oh. <laughs> there we go. A Twenty-five hits, and you don't have to add the the natural one to your counter, counter. which is <laughs> that's true. I got say the most Thank important you. thing. <laughs> Uh, okay, we got some addition to do here, huh? Uh, okay, let's see. Let's <laughs> begin. And then... It's this, and then there's that. 
I appreciate your patience through this time. Uh, okay. Here we go. What? That's 19. 19. And then we go with the second shot. Uh, this one's probably aimed like straight in the mouth opening, whatever is going on in there. <laughs> Not a good thing. A 25 hits. All right, all right. Uh, do I still get the fire bonus or was that a one time deal? Uh, yeah, no. Do it again. All right, let's go. The, these arrows will be impossible to recover afterwards, they'll be completely destroyed. That's fair. That is more than fair. Uh, here we go again. <laughs> Next to 23. Wow. And then, I think in fiction, Devami is still trying to hurt Mr. Slithers, but uh, it is going to be aimed at, um, at Cuddles with the Horde Breaker. Okay. Uh, so here we go again, another archery attempt can't believe that the ranger is attacking the dog it's cruel and unusual. 14 hits oh no <laughs> how could i have done this <laughs> a monster has been created a villain origin story this is yeah. what happens when talix <laughs> isn't here exactly <laughs> No holds part. That's a lot of thirteens that I'm adding up. I uh, got it. Oh wait, the, 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 the. yeah. Got it. Which brings us to two to cuddles. So, uh, is the mummy done? The mummy's done. Okay. Um, as one of the shots from the mummy goes a little bit too wide and ends up landing uh, on cuddles' side, there's a bunch of pebbles are just scattered on the ground uh, when when this happens, and cuddles has like this this um, part of her side that is missing the her equivalent of fur. Um, and the arrow is uh, sticking out, um, and she she yelps. Um, let me let me double check something on the uh, on Dramia's. Uh, um, hmm. It's not concentration, and it lasts ten minutes. Uh, yeah. I think she would still have speak with animals active at this point. It would be oh, towards okay. the end of it, but. Uh, yeah. For for the battle will be active, so she she would hear like the the the, the sounds of the dog getting hurt uh, to her ears, actually translate into something, and she goes, "Ow! Hey, that's that's not fair. That hurt." Um. And Carlos, what did I mean to press that? Uh, hide it, hide it. Carlos. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe should be from here. Oh, uh, one question. Did Mrs. Yes? Slithers react to Cuddles being shot at all? Or no? Uh, you... Ooh. You all felt this uh, very intense sense of worry and of anger when Cuddles got hurt. Uh, the feeling coming from outside of yourselves, whatever you might feel about it. Uh, and yeah. Cuddles comes to bite Devamia. Fair! <laughs> uh, does a, a 12 doesn't hit Devamia, right? Does not. And an eight certainly doesn't. No. Uh, those were poor attempts, uh, but oh. uh, she tried her best. 
Uh, does yeah. something happen when she ends her turn near the sphere, or is it when she starts? Uh, yeah, in fact, her and uh, and Slither's, because it ended his turn right after me, right? Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, both of them. Uh, anything that ends his turn needs to make the deck save, uh, DC 16. Okay, um, let's do it in order. So Slither's uh, dexterity, you said. Uh, it's 17. Uh, so it succeeds, so it takes 8 points of fire damage. Hmm. How does it work with the sphere? Okay. The, the, um, this is a little weird. The text for the sphere, it's flaming sphere. Uh, when you move the sphere, yada yada. You run it into a creature. Any creature in this turn within five feet of the sphere must make a dex saving throw. Yep. Um, huh. It looks okay. this like three uh, by three area. Right, the square. Got it. So, what would have happened um, at the? And it's at the end of their turns. Yeah, if they end their turn, so you can run past it, you can run through it, you can do anything as long as you don't end your turn next to it. Or if I use a bonus action to smash it into something. Got it. So b back to the previous round at the end of uh, his Slither's mm -hmm. uh, turn. Uh, when the fire would have been close enough to actually uh, harm him, uh, one of the many hands uh, would have been held up with a palm facing towards the sphere. And the fire would have sort of like swirled around in a little like uh, spiral around his wrist. And then he would have get gotten thrown at you, Pontifex. Mm. Um, meaning that you have to now roll a deck save against your own DC. Uh, is it still the damage on half? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, he will absorb elements regardless, so we will see. Uh, and then, yeah, I would absorb elements, so I will... Oh, uh, I guess it's that same damage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, eight. So you would have taken eight, and you have absorbed a little bit of, of your own fire in your staff for, for later use. Uh, and now we do... Uh, cuddles is a save, uh, which is... Br 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 two, ten... So she will take the full damage that you roll. Uh, 15. Just 15. Okay, and then she, she whimpers and uh, once again you're overcome with this feeling um, oh, of, of anger. Oh, right. So actually maybe this one doesn't happen to Cuddles. Cuddles, huh? Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's gone. Oh, no! You're keeping the two? Uh, oh, yeah, I forget. I can, I can, inspiration, you're right. Pick uh, one. Let's do, let's do forever alone inspiration. <laughs> the two people with three inspiration are the ones that are out of the fight. That's nope, funny. It's also a two. No. Oh no! Yoink. Which one is this? Revel inspiration. Aww. Um, uh, so sphere is gone. I can't move it. Yeah, sphere is gone, and the, the uh, cuddles does not take that damage, which was originally fifteen. So minus fifteen. Uh, we're here. Okay. Never mind. Uh, Pontifex, it's your turn. Your own fire has been thrown at you and then it dissipated. Uh. Oh, um, was someone like you uh, so attuned to the arcane arts? Um, what just happened they did feel like a spell. Uh. Oh, wait, the absorbing thing? Uh, yeah. The redirecting? 
Yep. Oh. The way he sort of like grabbed the the sphere like, and then like it would have been counterspellable. Yeah. Would you like to try? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're we're doing a lot of rolling back here. We're gonna do a whole lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, if this was a spell, absolutely, hundred percent. Uh, so if this is a spell of third level or lower, it just gets canceled. Otherwise, okay. I gotta make a roll. All right. So this is the part where we're gonna stop rolling back. Uh, here is yeah. what happened. Uh, he. He grabbed the sphere and threw it at you, and you, with your staff, you batted it back at him. Um, <laughs> so... My Uno reverse. <laughs> so, ultimately... Okay. Uh, ultimately. He takes the damage, take Cuddles it. take the damage, the sphere is here. Okay. And I did not use Absorb Elements spell slot. I used Counter Spell spell slot. Okay. Indeed. All right. Uh, we got it. And so the attacks sure. that, that the Vami did have all gone through. Uh, everything is as it should. And I just need to add up the damage, which for him is an extra 17. Um, and for her is an extra 15. And now we are at your turn, Pontifex. Okay. And we've done <laughs> things properly. Game. Uh, incredible. Uh, okay, then uh, let's do. Um, oh, uh, whenever Cuddles got got uh, burnt with this fire, does it seem there's any connection between Cuddles and this thing? Um. I um. I'm just going to tell you. Um. It's if you if you mean connection is in like she took damage and he took damage or the other way around. No, visibly no, nothing the, of the sort. But he seems he seems to care. He seems upset. You you feel this up uh, sense of being upset. All right, then I will do what must be done because Peep is not here to complain. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to use my action to uh, cast Tasha's Mind Whip. Uh, at second or at, at third level, so that I can target two creatures, uh, and I will target both of them. Okay, is that an uh, attack they roll both or need a to save? Make, uh, saves. These are int saves. Okay, uh, starting with his slithers, intelligence save. Mm -hmm. Okay, fifteen for him. Uh, so that is a fail. So he takes 10 points of psychic damage, uh, cannot take reactions until the end of its next turn, and also on its turn it has to choose between a move, an action, or a bonus action. It can only have one. Okay. The uh, damage the for, Cuddles, for Cuddles, uh, who has rolled less than that. Uh, uh, this much. Oh, God. She rolled a five. So 16. Uh, a lot more damage. And then same effect. Okay. And then bonus action, I'm going to ram the sphere um, into the creature. All right. Um, before you ram the sphere into the creature, you can tell me how you kill Cuddles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. You're going to be describe <laughs> how I kill a dog? Really? Oh. Yeah, he, um, he, you know, does his little mind magic business, uh, it gets into the, into the brain of, of the Slither one first and does its, its little rapture, uh, and then he moves to the dog, he kind of simultaneously, like, chaining off of the Slither's consciousness, it, like, being concerned about cuddles, he rides that, that mentality, uh, and, like, mentally just, like, lobotomizes the dog. Oh! <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like complete brain death. Have I marked my stream as for mature audiences? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> it's really hard to describe killing something with a mind whip and not be pretty brutal. I don't know if he's ever killed something with a mind whip. Um, if there is any consolation, physically cuddles um besides of the uh, the burn and the arrows sticking by her side, 
Um, she has some damage on her, but nothing that is like, like, oh, geez, this dog is dead. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, this dog is dead. Oh. Whoop! Oh. The carpet is also dead. <laughs> oh, it took the carpet with her. <laughs> Classic dog noob. You can take this. Oh no, the carpet is gone. <laughs> yeah, alright, I'll fix that later. <laughs> uh, Pontifex, you're ramming the sphere. Yeah, and then I'm bonus action ramming the sphere into the thing, uh, that deck save again, and it can't take reactions. I don't know if that spell thing it did earlier was a reaction. Uh, close that. So the deck save is a 25. So six points of fire damage. Okay. Um, at, at the same time that there's this explosion of fire uh, onto uh, his slithers, there's also this explosion of emotion throughout your minds. Um, and very much filled with this sense of, of grieving and then rage. Um, Pontifex, what, anything else in your turn? You made me do this. <laughs> it's your and fault. Said, this is your fault. Uh, skip through the steps of grief. Go straight to acceptance, please. <laughs> and then fuck off. <laughs> so he can only choose between uh, acting Move, or action, or bonus action. Okay. Yeah. One of the three. All right. Um, can people, can creatures be in the space of the sphere? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it says, sphere of fire appears within range uh, in an unoccupied space. Any creature that ends its turn within five feet. I don't think something can occupy the same space. Because it seems it to denote appear that to it is an imply. object. Yeah, it, it does seem to imply that it occupies its space. Uh, it's and since it's five foot, uh, five foot yeah. diameter, five foot then diameter it would cover sphere. like it's, it's a medium-sized object, basically. And it says, and the the verbiage it uses is ram the sphere. And if it doesn't have like physical substance, it's not a lot of. That's probably a really bad verb. Okay. Uh, in which case, the uh, the creature is going to choose to move, uh, and it's gonna come over here, uh, and then drag himself towards you, Pontifex. Uh, mm -hmm. So he, he would be occupying this space, and he's going to just uh, um, crawl over to his table and be coming uh, for, for you, like this. Uh, Pip, trust him. Deck save. Ending its turn within five feet of the sphere. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Ooh. Um, that is a 15, which I think is no a failure. Fail. So this much damage. 18, yeah. Got it. Um, nice. and, based on, and based on what you're, you're feeling, that he's feeling, he seems to, like, be hurt, but mm -hmm. not care. You're, you, the three of you are his focus. Yeah. Uh, back to the Tressim. Uh, yeah, if nothing's changing in this room, the Tressim is going to, uh, stay there. Um, I guess it'll take the dodge action. Sure thing. Just for fun, yeah. And then we're back to Virion. Alright, uh, she's just going to, uh, plant her feet where she is, take out her pistol again, and we're going to bonus action to steady aim, and just shoot it right at its big ugly mouth. To the mouth. Go ahead and roll your yes. attack. Also, I forgot last time that I had elven accuracy, so I'm going to crit fish and reroll at six. The never still hit. Um, okay. Ah, uh, and yeah, 23, 23 hits. Would you have elven accuracy on this one? That was the... that was it. 
So oh. anytime I have advantage, I can reroll one of the dice. Right. Uh, I just realized I wasn't adding my dex to my damage. That's fine. So, did you not roll three for that attack, that advantage one that you just did? That's that's a seven. Oh, I thought you were yes. re-rolling the six earlier. Never mind. Or maybe it was a nine, and I said the wrong. It was nine. That's why. I was re-rolling yeah, the nine. Last roll had a six, <laughs> so I was like, oh. Okay. Yes, I yeah, know. That's only if I have advantage. Uh, so you hit the gaping mouth. Uh, you shoot into it, down its throat. Um... There's another loud bang to, to Pontifex's uh, uh, dismay. Uh, <laughs> at least. It's fine. I know it's, it's like coming. right next to him. Yeah. <laughs> he knows it's coming this time. <laughs> Braces himself, covers his ears. Uh, and you hit. Alright, so um, that will be my turn. The, the, the creature is moving kind of slowly and is bleeding from multiple places, but uh, the, the slowness seems to mainly come from Pontifex's magic. Um. But the, the damage is building up, and this thing is it's pretty big and seems pretty pretty tough because of that. Um, but you're you're chipping away, uh, Devamia. All right, yeah, the six shooter sister in arms will continue <laughs> their barrage. Let's go. Oh yeah. Fourteen does not it. Okay, second one. A twenty-one does. There we go. Not good rolls, but it's some <laughs> damage two, two. nonetheless. Yeah. And that would be <laughs> the six shooting sisters. Oh yeah. <laughs> that will be a turn. I did, I did an oopsie. I put the damage in the wrong place. That was uh, 30. Okay. Uh, Pontifex, at the start of your turn, you need to roll a d10. Ooh. Ten. I like that it happened to you. Um, with this creature coming closer and closer, you can feel just your mind taking uh, all this weight upon it, uh, and it's it's it, it feels like it's slowing down your thoughts and it's hurting your head. Uh, but you are you're a pretty big brain, uh, and <laughs> this is uh, a, not affecting you. You can act and move normally on your turn. <laughs> I see what you do. You have picked the wrong man to fool with someone's brain. <laughs> Allow me to teach you. Uh, and I'm going to mind with him again. All right. And the save is intelligence, I think. Yeah, and 16. All right, 19. Uh, so he's 16. And half of the... Uh, ooh, decent roll. Uh, so five, uh, and it doesn't suffer that uh, the thing. Okay, it's just the damage. Uh, on a failed save, it takes damage. You can't take reaction. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so it also still has reactions. Got it. Uh, yeah, and then pond effects is gonna yeah bonus action sphere. Which is a dex save, uh, 16. Is that your DC? Uh, that, that exactly meets it, yeah. So he takes half of this, so seven. Seven damage. You are doing a number on him. Yeah, it's really good when they can't get out of the sphere. And like once I get rolling and if I don't care about resource dumping. Yeah, close, <laughs> just, just close quarters. Uh, yeah, it works really well for blood effects. Yeah, and then he's gonna he's gonna stand here, um, in place. He's gonna he's gonna hold the the door, so to speak. Mm -hmm. 
and make okay. it have to choose. But once to stand here, it's going to have to cook. Um, he slithers. Uh, he's trying to like push you away. Uh, one of his one of his many limbs, uh, literally just uh, uh, landing on you and trying to shove you aside. Uh, and <laughs> he seems to be struggling to get to the ladder. Um, and so yep. one of the other arms here, you're paying attention to each of his hands, and you see one of them uh, moving in a motion that uh, feels arcane to your trained eye. Uh, he is casting a spell. Uh, yep. Uh, I will counter spell immediately. You'd like to counter spell it? Okay, yeah, I will need sure. you to roll for this one. Okay. Ooh. Uh, so this is. Um, uh, if it's going to spell, make an ability check. I guess it's just a straight int check. That uh, sounds correct. I need to have at least a 14 or more. Nope. Yep, inspiration. Okay. <laughs> work. You need one, you need one, you need natural ones keep happening on like key moments. Yeah. Yeah, work. Isn't that what you said was going to happen? You're going to dump all of them? Ah, these suck. <laughs> <laughs> Plus it's five is a nine. Trying. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I gave it, you defective it, no, inspiration it, dice. Take another fine. one. Take another one. <laughs> I have three. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think down. I can roll inspiration more than once oh, yet. I think okay, it's a one no, one, one shot mind. thing. But way. I appreciate it all the same. I don't it's like it when enemies cast spells, especially if it's at minimum a fourth level spell. That's spooky. Okay. Okay. What happens? Um, as as one of the hands is uh, uh, sort of, it's as if dropping uh, an an invisible symbol in midair. Uh, you can feel. You, you can feel the presence of magic in the room and sort of building up around this creature and you hold up your staff to fight back against it but it's a bit more powerful than than you had expected and he slithers vanishes oh. I'm going to put him here uh okay. i the end of his turn, he does not take damage from being next to the sphere. Okay. Um, and we need to be in combat for a little bit longer. Um, depending. So, uh, I can tell uh, you that the situation with Atrasim here in the kitchen has not changed. Okay, uh, nothing invisible is in this room. Nothing invisible is in this okay. room. Oh, uh, then uh, the pawn effects, you know, it will be, it will know that the thing has disappeared and is going to fly up into this room uh, with pawn effects and see if there's anything invisible in here. Okay. Uh, under request of Pontifex, and uh, Pontifex can feel that the Tresim is getting kind of tired of doing what Pontifex is asking today, uh, but <laughs> she's, she's calming. There was a dog running around. It was kind of annoying to her. Um, well, now she comes up here and sees a dead dog. And yeah, her, her day has been made. Um, <laughs> okay. And uh, her uh, her person. magical eyes uh, her magical eyes do not detect an invisible presence in this room. Okay. Uh, then yeah, Pontifex is like on guard posture will will sloop a little bit, maybe as a signal for the others. Okay. And that's it. Jessam's gonna stay. Uh, as kind far of like as Virion, in this way. yeah, sure. As as far as Virion can tell, uh, this creature has disappeared. Like, are we still like feeling? Um, feeling you it don't, like we were. You don't feel the effects of being close to it. Uh, he he's his emotions and thoughts seem to have abandoned your mind now. Okay. Uh, we're just going to. Is that the collar? that cuddles drop still on the ground um so you don't see it right away and you make sure to like move cuddles's body over to to make sure that she's not uh, on top of it and the color is not here mm -hmm. uh so was that an action to do that otherwise she's going to no, write an action no, to no. okay then she's just gonna keep her gun out and just be ready to shoot if this thing shows up again. Okay. 
Uh, what does Tavami want to do? Uh, seeing that Varian is doing that, I think the Vami will prepare. There's another one by the Sphere. Oh, yeah. We'll prepare her bow yeah. as well. And, like, try to keep an eye on the corners that uh, Varian is not. Uh, yeah. Okay. What about Pontifex? Uh, is, is there some kind of a check he can make to, to figure out, did this thing teleport or, like, I don't know, try to try to identify what just happened. Try to recognize the spell. Um, recognizing the spell is not something you'd have a chance to do, uh, as okay. it is nothing of like the the plurnan sort. So it would be magic that he's unfamiliar with. Uh, he is just able to recognize it as magic, but he'd need like you know to have a detect magic up or something of the sort at at the moment to um, know. So there isn't really a check he can make. Uh, all he knows for a fact is that the Trasim is not seeing an invisible presence in this room. Uh, okay. Then, uh, yeah, he's going to uh, leave the flaming sphere where it is, just broiling away in the center of this room. Uh, I think it is gone. I'm going to check on the others. Uh, he's going to head down the stairs to, to the boyos. Okay. And with this we can leave uh, initiative and uh, oop. you're free to act uh, uh, as you desire what was that thing guess it's as good as mine podfest is it down there i'm sorry to trust him step uh, no. So and they are still this? They're still made of stone. Hmm. It looked like that thing was uh, hitchhiking when I saw Puddles earlier. It looked like her collar had fallen off and I can't find it anywhere up there. Maybe this is good. Maybe this is a sign we should not just allow anything into the tower. Okay. I mean, some scrutiny probably would be a good idea. Just in case. Uh, and Pontifex, I'm going to use my, my class uh, feature to instantly ritual cast detect magic um, in this room to see if it's magic that's messing with these statues. Okay. Um. A Pontifex would detect some magic surrounding him that he has already detected in the past on any other mm -hmm. occasion where he might have done this, this uh, spell before. Uh, the tower itself is uh, um, just constantly enveloped in this soft sense of magic that uh, just. Mm -hmm. uh, it envelops everything in this room. Uh, but outside of that and the various magical belongings on the party, um, it, uh, Brook and Pip and Squeak don't feel magical. Uh, what about the gloves on the statue of Brook? Like the, the magic items that each of them that Pontifex knows of. It's a belt. Oh, belt. Okay. It was yeah. A belt. Sorry. Um. It was honestly, belt, okay. like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, I'm trying to think of what would be the correct thing to say. They've been petrified. Would they? Would their belongings emanate magic if they were magical before? I don't know if petrification would like remove the magical qualities of something. Like, hmm. If you petrify a wish blade, does it lose wish? You know. Right. Okay. Um. Then tell me what you can feel like this faint sense of magic from uh, the magical belongings of Brook and Pip. 
Okay. Uh, and even Squeak's armor has like this faint glow about it. Um, this is Pontifex and... trying to confirm if these are just statues mm-hmm. or if these are actually them and they have been petrified. Yeah, and taking like a closer look at their magical items, so they have not been petrified. They're just covered in like the thinnest layer of stone. So like mm-hmm. noticing this, you can actually like break that off, and you could remove those items if you wanted. Uh, no, he was just using it to confirm if this is actually them. Okay. <laughs> what about until you cease to be objects? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are them. Uh, these items are the ones that they hold, so these are not statues, these are our friends. Then what do we do about it? Yeah. We have to do, get them outside know? of the tower. I've never uh, pondered the, the possibility of us becoming a stone inside of here, but objects in the tower, when it leaves, stay with the tower forever. So I don't want to risk it. Okay. I... Do we do it now or do we wait? I don't. I mean, are we planning on unsummoning the tower right now or? Uh, no, it, uh, it will go away. How long is it? I think up to 24 hours. Tower. Yeah, 24 hours. So you guys uh, still have 22 to go. Okay. Oh, and yeah, and I can't like end it early either. You can. It it can be ended oh. earlier. Okay. Like you guys, you guys generally pack it up in the morning, you know, eight to nine hours after you originally put it down. Is this tower, am I like misremembering, is this tower like secure? Or can something just walk through the front door? Um, anyone can potentially enter or exit. It does have locks. Mm-hmm. Plus, whatever other things you generally, if you do anything, normally you keep okay. watches. Do you okay, seriously want to rest time. here? After what just happened? Oh, I, I'm sure it was not part of the tower. It was something to do with uh, the dog. Uh, the collar, and neither of which, or at least the collar, isn't here. Uh, the tressim is up there with the the body of the animal. I would rather take our chances in here than out there, but uh, as a precaution, I am going to uh, put my armor back on. That was terrifying. Not a bad idea, especially if who knows where it went off to, if it's lurking. I don't understand much about how this magic stuff works, but... Right. Uh, though the, this feels silly, I'm not a child, but uh, I feel like me going alone is a liability. I know this involves leaving one of you alone, but uh, should it come to blows, I favor your chances over mine. I mean, we can all... There's no reason all three of us can't go. I'm afraid really to leave them alone. Why would we lock the door? It didn't no, seem I don't to stop think... it before. I think, it, I think the dog had it. I think it came in with the dog. Well, it teleported away or something. So if it can leave with this, I presume it can enter with this. Uh, but you're right. I don't think it could do anything more to them. Fair enough. So what's the plan then? We just rest through the night and then we try to find someone who can break through this stone? We recuperate and I will see what I can do. Uh, I used most of the the depths of my ability fighting off the thing, but I think that maybe uh, with some magical recuperation I can can do something about this. Uh, In fact, if you just give me an hour uh, I can, I can try my best shot. If it doesn't work, then I'm lost. Uh, but it will take me an hour to do it. Let's see if not, I saw that there's a decent collection of books up there. I can see if I can. If there happens to be anything that might give us some insight into what this might be. Uh, sure. Good call. Yeah.
Uh, okay, so I'm get going to go first. on my armor and then take an hour. And I'll see if I can find anything. Uh, hopefully they're at least decently well organized. Uh, if it is Aaron, I know he will be. Okay. Uh, so Varen is going to go through the, uh, the books in the office. And yes. Pontifax is going to put on his armor, and then what is he attempting? Uh, uh, he's going to try to take a second short rest so that I can use my arcane recovery feature to get back my fourth level spell slot so that I can try to a, a fourth level dispel magic. Okay. That is the plan. All right, so uh, Pontifax is taking a short rest. We're just looking through the books. And Devamia? Devamia is taking her shift, standing guard. Yeah. Got Not it. Yeah. In the kitchen? Not Probably, yeah. I think so. Okay. Uh, with this plan uh, uh, in, in motion, I'm going to call for a break now. All right. Excellent. Good job on beating. 15 minutes. It... Need a big Woo! one. All right, all right, all right. Go team. <laughs> okay. Uh, in that case, if we are ready to resume, boop. Um, we have uh, the Vamia watching over Brooke and Pippin squeak, uh, the Tressim and Viren in the office, and Pontifex putting on his armor and uh, uh, taking a, a brief uh, break to gather his thoughts and regain his magical uh, energies. Uh, for Virion. I will ask for an investigation check. Absolutely. I'm going to just uh, click. <laughs> I'm going right. to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my inspiration on that one just to see if, you know, I feel like this is urgent a little bit. All right. <laughs> I'll be taking your die. It's not a 20. Nice. <gasps> Wait, this is the part where like your dice luck run turns around. Uh -huh. You make up for all the other I'm glad ones. someone's inspiration works. <laughs> <laughs> glad one of them functions. Uh Virian. Hi Pumpkin. She's joining in for the for this <laughs> part of the session. Uh, Fear and everything me. in this office is Our cat very. Name is Pumpkin. It's really cute. Uh, everything in this office is very well organized. Everything is is labeled and titled properly, and it's where you expect to to find it. Um, going through these bookshelves real quick, it seems like whoever has left these notes here uh, has left observations about uh, Ladaria. Um, so you're quickly picking up on the fact that like some kind of explorer has written these things and it's uh, his own thoughts and uh, what he has seen and experienced uh, across Ladaria. And there is um, this whole set of notes that are all um, uh, rolled up together uh, that are all about uh, the area that your companions have been calling Dustfall, where you currently are. So you grab all those papers, you sit down on the chair, you say you... Uh, unfurl them on the table, uh, covering every square inch uh, of available wood, uh, and you're you're pouring through them. Um, the whoever went through here didn't stay for too long, but there's observations about the creatures, uh, some that you have seen, uh, such as the the elephant uh, creatures with the stone tusks. Um, you've seen uh, you've seen butterflies that looked like pebbles, but the moment you you went too close, uh, it turned out to just be their camouflage, and uh, the uh, the wings were the same color as the surrounding rocks, and they flew off. Uh, various animals with parts of them made of stone and parts sometimes even made of diamond. Uh, something a a a, a uh, an observation that uh, a is quickly emerging from you looking through the description of all these creatures is that um, the 
animals in dust fall have very quickly evolved to be able to survive in this environment. And those who eat other animals usually have two methods of doing so. Uh, they will either have uh, uh, some kind of acid, like the lizards that you have fought earlier today, uh, that is able to break down uh, a creature even when part of it is made of stone. Uh, and the lizards and others will do it to like be able to cut through the, the stone shell of, uh, of the tortoises that live in this dust desert. Uh, and other such creatures. Either that or they will have diamond teeth or diamond-like teeth uh, in order again to break through the stone. And the creature you that just appeared in this office moments ago where now you're surrounded by the, the signs of the battle, some uh, parts of the, of the table in the middle are scorched, uh, the, the, the pages on this book, uh, the, the very topmost ones have uh, burnt up a little bit. Uh, the creature you fought here earlier, the, the one that was uh, worm-shaped, uh, despite the immense mouth, um, its teeth did not seem to be made uh, of diamond or stone or, or any other material, and there was no sign of any acid of any sort. Um, which makes you believe that despite its, its uh, grey colour, which does show that it can camouflage in this environment, and it is from Dustfall, uh, it doesn't seem to have any way of eating through stone, uh, with their conclusion being that it probably does not, and it actually eats creatures in the flesh. Um, so putting together this conclusion uh, and other notes and what you have observed, um, the way it seemed to team up with this dog, uh, there's this like a nagging feeling in the back of your mind that uh, uh, that creature probably has some method of turning stone back to flesh in order to actually be able to eat it. Uh, otherwise, there aren't the notes about this particular creature um, that uh, uh, this author has observed, so you, you only get your own conclusions. Uh, um, on on what it could be and what it can do. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, that would be it for for Virion. Trasim is lounging around, keeping an eye on her. Um, the Vamia, nothing is disturbing her, and Pip and Brook are just still completely uh, uh, frozen. And uh, Pontifex, you complete your short rest. Uh, then, yeah, he will rejoin. I think you said that you are attempting uh, dispel magic, yes? I'm not a 7th level. So only recover a 3rd level spell slot, so still using Dispel Magic, uh, but it's only at 3rd level, so I'd have to make a check for 4th or higher. Uh, and uh, he, would, he would do it on Brook, for sure. Hey. Okay. Um... Pontifex, there is no need to roll. Uh, the spell is not going to have any effect. Okay. Does this still use the spell slot? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. It seems this is not something I can undo. Then what? Do you know anyone on this continent that can... Fix them? The, the question is not is there anyone, the question is there is there anyone who would help? But why wouldn't they help? Uh, a myriad of reasons. But uh, so that's neither here nor there. You don't know them. They're too far away. Uh, I don't know. I, I need to think. 
uh, the best idea I could come up with is find some way to. Uh, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe the people of that city we were going to kill. Maybe someone there knows something. But uh, that's all I have. That's uh, all you have? Beyond it's beyond me, okay? Two of your companions are stone right now. That's not good enough. Yeah, and one of them was dragged beneath the surface of the ocean by a demon. Another one is lost, trapped as a prisoner in a, in a village of murderous xenophobic psychopaths. Please let me know who else I have lost. Everyone that I know or care about is gone. Instead, I am stuck with you and the fishwoman. Do not lecture me. Fine. Still, we gotta figure out something. No, I have to figure out something. Don't think too highly of yourself. Oh. Oh, I see how it is. Think you can do it all on your own? Huh? I think I'm the only one who can, unless you have some aptitude with petrification magic. Please explain to me, which book did you author? I'm not afraid of asking for help. Which seems and who like are you good. going to ask? I don't Your know. friends at the gym? Wow. Okay. You know what? You're in the mood. I can see that. I'm just going to step away. You deal with your own thing. Great. Uh, and yeah, Pontifex is gonna pull up a chair. He's gonna he's gonna think or pose <laughs> on this table, <laughs> uh, specifically on the other side. And he's gonna sit there and just stare at Broken Pip. Uh, yeah, if nothing else, if uh, Virian does come back, then Devon would probably check up on Virian. I mean, I think she would want to share, but she's not touching that situation right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. If you poke your head down the trap door, yeah. it sounds like there's an argument going on, and uh, you just now just you go are. back to just go back to what she was doing. The only thing I can think of is God. Is like, man, I've been dealing with these people for like over a year. We need some fresh things. Like, uh, capture this one. I can play an orc. Bring in a new person, new character. These other ones, there, they have to go. <laughs> I need a new party. <laughs> Which would mean I am next. <laughs> I, I am out of I am out for blood. Over my dead body. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> oh, shit, fuck. No. <laughs> no, not like this. Uh, yeah, see, probably... the god is even tampering with my inspiration. Hey, you learn anything up here? Unfortunately, not as much as I would have liked. I uh, was able to piece a little bit together. Um, it seems that that thing that we just fought, the uh, crawler or whatever, I happen to know that his name was, which is still, still trying to figure that out. Um, it seems from what I saw, it wouldn't be something that would... I'm not sure if it's not native to the area or has not adapted to the area wouldn't eat stone like many of the other things here do which means i don't know what it means but it would likely if it was here to hunt and if it did petrify our friends to snack on them later it would likely have a way to unpetrify them what that way is i do not know. It seemed to have some sort of uh, magical capabilities, but other than that, uh, only guess. I mean, if we can find a way to to get it back and have it dawn stone them, I just don't know how we would go about doing that, or if there was a way we could figure out what that ability is. Huh. 
Okay. So, if that thing was just, like, foraging for the bad times, then we just find its nest, right? It's gotta have some sort of home. Unfortunately, I wouldn't know where the first place to start. I mean, I suppose we could go back to where we found that thing. The dog, yeah. But that'd be close. I mean, it, it's just such a strange ruse. I mean, I suppose it was just waiting for the right people to come along and take pity on a lost dog. Though I don't see why... I, I just It feels like there's not enough people that go through this area to make it worthwhile, but maybe there is. Or maybe it just uses a dog to lure things that would otherwise eat it. I am not entirely sure. But going back to where we found it is probably a decent first step, at least. It's a better idea than what old Geezer has downstairs. He's got nothing, so I mean... He does seem in quite that. the mood. It's yeah. unfortunate that I wasn't able to find anything more helpful up here, but it seems that whatever that thing is, uh, whoever left all these notes hadn't encountered it before. That's fair. I mean, yeah, that's why I'm out here in the first place, trying to learn about this place, about Ladaria, about everything it's got to offer. Strange place. Unusual. Yeah. I haven't quite gotten used to it yet. I was trying to do some stargazing earlier, and with the storm it was hard, but everything is different. It's not what I'm used to. I do have one worry if you're going back out there, though. We are just basically three people, and we don't know what we're going to be up against next, so... How are we going to prepare ourselves? I face worse odds. I mean, it seemed we had it on the run already. Assuming that it's still just the one and not an entire nest of them as you think it might be. I, I hope not. I just, we don't know, right? We don't, we don't. Do you know a little more about it? That uh, getting close to it is a terrible, terrible decision. Yeah, that what did that thing even do to you? I'm not sure. It's just as soon as I got next to it, it felt like every thoughts I have ever had that it ever had just crushed me. It was hard to put to words since then next thing I know I'm walking face first into a wall. Dang. Okay, well, yeah, just remember to keep that thing loaded and, yeah, keep our distance, I guess. Yeah, unfortunately, I only have uh, 25 shots left with this We're in trouble, aren't we? Seems we might be, but... Did I face worse odds? Still alive? I think the first thing is for all of us to not be at each other's throats, or... It's throwing insults at every chance we get, so this is not directed at you. No, fine. <laughs> Fine. I'm not gonna pick a fight with him. He just can't really get on my nerves sometimes. That's that's all. I just keep my mouth shut until I figure he's, things out. He's grating, uh, I have to admit, but he does have some skills and seems that uh, the other people here seem, seem to like him for some reason. Yeah. It's not a fight I'm willing to pick. Seems especially now. Uh, Having whatever allies we can get in this situation, I don't think we're going to find much more help out here. Yeah. You're right. I'm happy you're here. We would have been doomed. <laughs> we did not have you here. Anytime. Seems that uh, our goals are similar right now, so... Mm -hmm. Honestly, it feels kind of good to be in this sort of work again. Starting to feel a bit like a relic. Yeah, once, once all of this is done with that, I, I want to hear more of your stories. Seems like you've been up to a lot. 200 some years of war. Time before that. 
Hold on time. I suppose well, we should go and let him know what we know and see if maybe three heads can make a sense of this. Yeah. And then we gotta prep and figure out what we do next. I'd like to call a truce. Sounds good to you. And what do you mean a truce? It implies let's, war. Let's just not argue like we did, okay? At least until we get these moving again. Fine. There is something else I just thought of that... Uh... Viren will fill in Pontifex and everything that she learned, and then just add at the end, if we're going to go after this thing, that that's anything left in the tower is part of the tower after we dismiss it, and we don't know what is going to happen with uh, Brook and Pip and Squeak here. Yeah, exactly, we have to get them out. And then I suppose all them around, I don't know. I mean, I'm in decent shape, all things considered, but hauling uh, stone statues is not exactly in my wheelhouse. Especially through a desert, through a storm. And it seemed that the thing that we were up against probably wanted to eat them. I think the last thing we want to do is just bring it a snack. Say, if it wanted to eat rocks, it could have eaten the tower. It doesn't eat rocks. Well, then, if it brings them back, better. Well, if it brings them back, it's great, but if it does it and we're not there, I don't think there'll be much to recover. I don't intend to let them out of my sight until this is resolved. Not them too. It's all fine and good, but I don't know if we're going to be able to fight and watch them without. How do, do you know think what this thing is? One of you or both of you could estimate their weight together. Uh, I mean, yeah, Devamia has been, like, pulling on Brooke several times now, so try. Trying to estimate how much they, uh, Brooke and Pip weigh? Yeah, the yeah. combined weight in their stone form. Yeah, I mean, individual okay. and then, yeah, put together. All right. Um, so on on average just trying to like pick them up and move them around and like comparing your weights with other things around the the tower um they are far heavier than they used to be um more accurately they're approximately 10 times heavier how much did pip weigh before uh, i don't have a weight for Pip, but he's carrying 81 pounds so it's that plus whatever his weight is and then times 10 hmm. <laughs> wait so we're Pip a was little carrying bit carrying 81 pounds of stuff how much did Pip himself weigh Austin <laughs> uh, have we just Austin we lost in from TTS mm, oh I'm but he's here. on Discord it, okay TTS crashed for me um mm -hmm. Wait, no, that's not that 80 pounds. Hold on, I'm looking at the wrong card or sheet. Whoops. Yeah. Pip is, ca Pip is carrying <laughs> he's 40, around 40 more pounds. Than his own wide body weight. 42. Yeah, he's carrying 42 uh, pounds. And he weighs and he 75. Weighs... Okay, there we yeah. go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at the body for some reason. Okay, I was seeing if, uh, if I could possibly floating disc one of them, but I can't. Maybe Pip, uh, Pip Squeak. Could, <laughs> yeah, Squeak. I could maybe do Squeak, yeah. I don't know. Well, with his armor, maybe not. It can hold 500 pounds. It's pretty small. And uh, 
he doesn't give a shit about Squeak. If Squeak <laughs> gets eaten, he will just come back. Uh, he cares less about Squeak than he does about the cat's life, and he hardly <laughs> cares about that because he can just bring it back and he knows it. Uh, he's a wizard. He understands familiars. <laughs> They're not real. They're not real. <laughs> not like this... Farum. What a good boy. I'm just not sure if we can carry them with us. They're very, very heavy. Our horses are dead, man. <laughs> <laughs> they've been they've been out in the wilderness I, I, for days. Farum was a scrapper, okay? <laughs> Don't tell me this. I, this is my last beacon of hope. Don't take it away. <laughs> Just want my boy back. We should have went the we should have went the short way. <laughs> We should never help animals ever again. <laughs> oh, Every agree. time we do, I lose someone important to me. And they're replaced by people unimportant to me. <laughs> <laughs> they're all replaced with women. All the boys are not. <laughs> it's just women. I do poorly with women. <laughs> Even the cat. <laughs> Even the stupid cat. <laughs> you fuck the man, the bro, the homie. <laughs> you left this stinky thing. It's this funny sucks. how it happened. And one of them is older than me. I don't even have seniority. This is awful. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> I think we, we may just have to trust that uh, if we can. Fix them that they'll be able to leave. I'll just leave if them in the tower. Seems the safest place for them. And what if we're wrong? The tower's pretty nice. Uh, everything is nice until you, you know, you're stuck there for too long. It's called cabin fever. You lose your mind. And if either of them lose their mind, it's probably really bad, especially Pip. You don't think I know. Uh, but it's. Our other option is to try to drag them through this dust storm, which we can hardly move them in ideal conditions here. And do you think we can fight and keep them protected? And that's not to mention if the storm really whips up, if it does any damage to them, that might carry over. No, it's not ideal, but... I just... No, you're right. I just in denial. I'm moving on to the next stage of grief. Sorry, could you repeat that? I didn't hear you. Good. Right it wasn't for you to hear. <laughs> you want me to be... Uh, fine. Fin finish getting some rest. We need to be on our best if we're going to do anything about this, because it is three of us now. You're right. The Theresum isn't the person. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen it fight in... Well, I've never seen it fight, so I kind of I uh, didn't expect it, it to. Crazy. It can uh, it can breathe fire and lightning and stuff. Well, that would have been very helpful. Eh, there was plenty of fire. <laughs> it was the, some of the books are a little scorched. Uh, nothing seems uh, too yeah, bad, right. but... If that cat was in there, uh, the whole place, whoosh, gone. And I don't want one of these tower's rooms to be perpetually filled with ash that we can't remove. Why don't you two go finish resting up? I'll stay down here. Keep an eye on things. Alright, I'll try to think of something. Something we can do. I think I'm just going to stay here, actually. <laughs> Devami up, <laughs> leaves. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> nope. uh, yeah, Pontifex is going to stay in this chair. Uh, he's going to, like, you know, cross his arms in front of him on the table, smush his face into it, and try to sleep. Okay. And uh, we're. we're, we're, we're... Virion B. Virion's gonna hang out in the kitchen too. Do the same thing, except for not squish her face into the table. It's just gonna <laughs> sit there for a couple hours. Uh, once she is up, once she's up and about, she's gonna cook some food though and make enough for everybody. All right. Aww. 
<laughs> You're just going to be staring at this cabinet. So the worst uh, part is I'm sitting bottles. too. I'm not even standing. Yes, you're sitting. <laughs> at least you're comfortable. Am I without a wall to support my back? Uh, better than standing in place. Bro. <laughs> okay. Mm. I'll take perception checks from everybody. Everybody? Everyone? Everybody who is not stone. Got it. Sorry for oh, giving look. you false hope. It's, okay. I didn't, it's dirty 20. I didn't do the ad. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, uh, and the Tresum, no? Yep. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, and would this check rely on, uh, smell? No. Perfect. Okay. Sorry to had to uh, think uh, um, about this for a moment. So the hours pass. Uh, sleep doesn't find uh, Pontifex and Devamia uh, with ease. Um, Pontifex, from where you are, you're just sitting there and you can see both of uh, uh, your companions and squeak. <laughs> um, <laughs> just doomed to be stone now uh, and it's even when you close your eyelids it feels like you can still see them um, you're in your uh, you are done with uh, with trancing already and just uh, uh, you're mulling things over everything you have just learned from those notes trying to um, get any kind of idea uh, to come to mind uh, Devami back on uh, her on her bedroll uh, but it's it's hard to sleep in this room now with the the memories of what just happened here, of the battle that just took place, just sort of haunting your mind. Uh, but the hours are passing, one by one. Um, mm, mm-hmm. Until Virion. <laughs> There is movement in your vision, uh, and you immediately sit up uh, and pay attention. Uh, the movement is coming uh, uh, from ahead of you and a little bit to your left. Uh, as you can see, one of Brooke's hands, uh, the fingers regaining color and moving a little bit. Then the wrist and then the arms. Um, as before your eyes, uh, uh, Brook is turning back to his uh, flesh and blood self. Most of the stone seemingly kind of just fading away. Some um, falls off of him, flecks of dust and rocks hitting the, the floor, making a very, very light blink, blink, blink sound. She will go like shove Pontifex away just like super rough like shake his shoulder and then go over to Brooke Pontifex you're being shoved by a woman a fish lady <laughs> he shoves back <laughs> no he does right, not he does not to do so <laughs> yeah he'll he'll stand up and uh, if Brooke is starting to move uh, Pontifex is going to ignore him entirely and focus on okay Come on, you little shit. Start moving. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is no visible change in Pip. Brooke, um, you're sleeping. And uh, you 
with the way you're seated up against nothing, uh, the moment uh, your body is no longer made of rock, you begin to just, like, uh, pretty quickly just fall backward and thud! You hit your head against the floor and you sit up immediately, just awake. What the fuck? Where am I? <laughs> You're in, in the tower, in the kitchen. Um, a lot, a lot has happened, but it's good to see you up and not stone. He looks around. Wasn't I outside? You were? That's where we found you? Um, there was a creature, a uh, Turned you and Pip and Squeak into uh, some lovely decorations. Huh. Thank God that doesn't permanently. Uh, my head hurts. <laughs> Bert, I turn look, around. You look over, uh, and uh, you see you see Pontifex, you see Virion, um, Squeak. And a uh, squeak, I guess, from your angle wouldn't really quite be visible uh, if you're sitting down on the ground, but uh, there's something that appears to be wrong with, Pe with Pip. You, you mean like that? Exactly like that. Um, so we just... Uh, uh, Devonia was... Uh, I guess she went to go check on you and just found you both like this. Um, fortunately, it seemed that, uh, our canine friend had a hitchhiker, and he, uh, attacked, it attacked, and we were able to chase it off, but it was not happy. So um, you fixed me. Can you fix him as well? Do the same thing? We didn't do anything. I tried to fix you, but it didn't work. It just... Wore off, I suppose, but I don't know why not for Pip. Pontifex huh. and Brook, you're you both, um, and Viria, sorry, um, the three of you hear this sound regular, familiar of squeak snoring. <laughs> <laughs> that wonderful noise. Hate it. <laughs> oh, here, hold. check over here. How, uh, how's how's we looking? And he, he's normal, sleeping away in his little basket. Like completely normal looking? Yeah, he's no longer made of stone. Bill. Let me turn Apparently not stand on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me turn off the grid. There you go. Stands on ceiling, looks down at creature. <laughs> yes. I think she'll just kinda of like nudge squeak awake. Daddy! Dad! Uh. <laughs> What? Oh, hey. Hey. What? Uh, hello? Um, good morning. Good Good morning. Um, well, it's not that, that good. Um, good to see that you're awake. You had some problems yeah. over, over the nights. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I didn't hear anything. You were... Just... Squeak does not feel well rested. It feels like he was woken up after. I feel maybe, like crap. <laughs> maybe an hour. You're sleeping like a rock. <laughs> <laughs> the same applies to Brook. Well, none of us are ready. right. Uh, correct. I feel like I got the uh, the the uh, sleep apnea. You are. Uh... Or turned to, turned to stone, and now you're not. No wonder I was having a hard time breathing in my sleep. Okay, hard time. I guess it. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? 
Hey, look at Pip. Oh! Hey. Hey, hey. hey. Don't, don't worry. Hey, you all wore stone and Brooke I'm was free. first than you. I'm free! What, <laughs> what do you mean you're free? <laughs> See ya, sucker! <laughs> Poof! <laughs> All right, I forgot. Not people. Fair enough. That was less helpful than I thought it would be. Uh, you know, I don't know why Pip doesn't just let him roam like I do with... Uh... You know, she really needs a name. Anyways, uh, we did thresh him. Probably because he couldn't speak as a... I mean... I don't know. I feel like allowing him some freedom is probably pretty good. I feel like Pip saw Squeak as like a friend, if not as a captive. Maybe I'm right. Maybe Pip is more sadistic than to give him credit. <laughs> There's a, there's a sudden pop as uh, Squeak reappears back in the basket, and he just says, David, she's Not sitting afraid. back. <laughs> <laughs> Still doing okay, time. Well, you know, don't worry about Pip's well-being too much. You don't want it to keep him awake at night. You need your beauty sleep. Yeah. So, uh, what happened? Uh, uh, Devamia, at this point, you you would have been woken up by the voices. Well, our, our friend Cuddles uh, seemed that she hadn't lost her dad after all, and he was tagging along, and he tried to eat all of us. Her dad tried to eat you? Oh yes, it was actually gosh. it was incredibly painful. She ate the Vamia, didn't she? Oh no, she's a she's alive. Oh, damn it! Uh, Would have been cool. The three of us were able to fend it off. Good. Well, tink tink tink. <laughs> so he's just stuck like that, huh? Presumably, it wears off soon. Uh, so we're, or we're off for the two of you. Um, there's not. We don't know a lot about this. Only that it's uh, was hungry, and likely has some way to unpetrify people that it petrifies, so it can eat them. Other than that, yeah. I think I'm starting to hate this place. It's not... Not exactly home. You have to worry about anything like this. We're still, what, four days away from Tekka? Something like that. Seems like it may be a little bit longer. Uh, best we can come up with if uh, Pip doesn't uh, recover on his own is that we'll have to go back to where we met the dog and hope that we can find that thing's home or nest or whatever it might have and figure out how to get it to unpetrify Pip. Which does mean backtracking. You know what's really ironic about this? I'm presuming you're going to tell me regardless of what I say. Yeah. I, I so presumed it was rhetorical, so I was just going to wait. Pip's been, uh, he's been looking into, like, potions and stuff. One of the things he was looking into was, like, an unpetrifying kind of potion. I just thought that was kind of funny. Maybe the boy has some level of foresight. Or the dog told him and he didn't let us know. That's much worse. So where is this dog, huh? Dead. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna hate you. 
It did try to attack us. It won't matter. I know it won't matter. But it is also inevitable, so I'm not going to fight something that I can't change. The boy will learn. Where's the body? Upstairs. Yeah, let's get that thing out of here before he sees. Yeah, not a bad idea. Who's doing that? I need to get some movement into these limbs anyway, so I can go up, <laughs> carry it back. I can give you a hand. That's very strong, but and myself. The two of you do what uh, what the mommy had. I didn't even had a chance to attempt earlier. Um, and yeah, we don't de we don't that de detail this. You just take the body out, and you make sure it will be somewhere where uh, people will never see it. Um, the mommy said earlier that like you could have been very tiny pieces. Bury it oh, into each of their own spot. Uh, Sarah said earlier that Devamia would have been woken up by the voices, she, so she could like see them coming. Uh, and and Brook is fine now, uh, and he's coming over with uh, with Virion, and they're taking the the dog, uh, and yeah, taking her down. What? What? Brook? You're moving? Good evening. Apparently. When did that happen? Well, I woke up from a big smack on my head because I fell. And then I woke up. Very, I didn't know you were that good. That was fast. I didn't do anything. It just kind of fixed itself. Oh, even better. <laughs> well, welcome back to the, to the living world. Unfortunately, Pip still Thank seems you. to be stone cold. Yeah, but we do have Squeak back. Wait, but why, why wouldn't Pip be back if you're back? Oh, maybe, maybe. Because, he's, because he's smaller, that it affected him better, but I mean, Squeak is much, much smaller. How old is Squeak? Maybe it's age. You want to know how old I am? Yeah. How old am I? <laughs> <laughs> if you tell me that you're older than me as well, I'm going to incinerate this room. Hold on, I'm asking God. <laughs> how old am I, God? Uh, squeak. Hmm. I'll look it up. <laughs> You'll look it up. <laughs> I'm I'm uh contemplating counting. Got, you have to like translate the devil calendar into whatever we use and yeah, it's, yeah, math. it takes a little <laughs> bit of math. It's a bit rough. <laughs> yeah, he's doing math. They come in base eight too. I hear. <laughs> oh well, at least that's gonna make tomorrow easier. Uh, whatever we plan to do next for Pip. But... Oh. I think I'm older than Pip, and I'm younger than my dad. <laughs> Squeak is 73. I'm 73. Oh, you're younger than me. Maybe it's that son. Bring chicken. Basically a toddler. <laughs> yeah. My dad is. Oh, you want me to give you the, <laughs> the age <laughs> of Squeak's dad? Hold yeah. on. I need to write this uh, somewhere. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Squeak, no. Hmm. <laughs> My dad is, I don't know. At least 74. <laughs> I don't know. Some, some number. Okay. He's uh, older than me and younger than his dad. <laughs> Squeak's dad is 724 years old. Holy crap. Does Squeak have siblings or did did his dad just get started at an old age? <laughs> <laughs> Squeak has siblings. He is the youngest. 
I'm going to need all this lore in my <laughs> inbox. <laughs> <laughs> then get you the family tree. Seven hundred and what? Twenty-four. Yeah. My and dad's he... seven hundred and twenty-four. He's the youngest of sixty-three siblings. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Demons get their own dragons. <laughs> wow. So, oh, they don't. They, they in my mind, Squeak's mom has been, like, out of the picture for a while. Maybe she died. I don't know if devils <laughs> die or, like, <laughs> they got in a nasty got divorce. Out of existence. Or <laughs> yeah, she's just, she's out of the picture. Drowned. This is, this is all stuff I have she totally... She drowned. Yeah. This is totally in stuff I've had planned for a long time. Just, yep, <laughs> I'm totally reading it on my notes. This is, yeah... This is the important stuff. That was canon, though. Yep. I'm writing it all down. <laughs> yep, we have it on tape. My mom was quite a bit younger than my dad. It was kind of a... It was kind of a scandalous thing when it came out, because she's only 240. <laughs> now is not the time for Squeak's backstory. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think at this point we have two options. We can move forward and hope that Pip recovers on his own, or we can backtrack and hope that that thing can unpetrify him and we can get it to do that. Mm. I didn't meet that thing, but how likely is it that we convince? Turn Pip back. I mean, it seemed to have at least some level of intelligence, but it was also very um, food motivated. <laughs> and it's also not particularly fond of us right now. We did kill its dog. Well, I guess leaves option two, which is just hope that Pip recovers on his own. I mean, I wouldn't see why he wouldn't, right? I recovered. Queef recovered. Why wouldn't he? I can think of a myriad of reasons. If it's an effect that takes hold and is permanent if it lasts too long, if he was the first one turned, if because he's so... I mean, Squeak is much smaller, but he's also a devil. It might affect it. Um, it's possible that he won't recover on his own. <laughs> this is what you get for bringing Overwatch into this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Punishment. <laughs> Why don't we wait till the morning? And then we go. And he still isn't back. We look for... We look for... The thing that turned him. It's not a bad plan. Get some rest, clear our heads, get a good meal, and then do what it takes us. All right. Well, thanks for protecting me. Of course. All right. Where do I sit? Uh, So it's room one. Yeah. Where, where are you going? Into a different room to sleep. Okay. <laughs> Not going to the first floor anymore. <laughs> Screw the kitchen. Yeah. I love how this is the first thing you see when you come down the ladder. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like, what a just spot the, you picked. <laughs> just the, the cold, dead stone stare <laughs> upwards towards you. <laughs> <laughs> the the creepy dolls looking creepier than ever. Yeah. 
It looks like they did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys are a few hours away from a long rest. You've, you have interrupted it multiple times. Viren, you're the only one who has like already... Who's already feeling great. Um, but uh, the others have a few more hours to go. Ah... Uh, well, I feel a little better about this, knowing that Brooke is back, so... One of the boys, you know. One of the boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to leave and go back to sleep in the bathroom. Goodbye. <laughs> Rest well. Uh, I probably will this time. Um, alright. Where uh, is uh, is Virion staying in the kitchen, washing over Pip? Uh, yeah, she'll stay in the kitchen. The and too. Continue with the blender, make breakfast. Uh, yeah, the mm. woman would probably grab the the meal that Virion was cooking up and then get some more rest. Okay. Let me double check so, something. So just out of curiosity, like Pip didn't leave like his any of his potion stuff lying around. Did he, or did he, was he pretty meticulous with cleaning it up? Mm. Austin, has he only made the one potion? Uh, so far, yeah. Okay, so that potion is currently in uh, in Brooke's belongings, and he's working he... on a new one. He will be, yes. Okay, he but hasn't he, started tonight. He has not started that. Okay, so no, okay. um, okay. yeah, Pip, Pip's items will not be scattered around. He, he didn't do anything tonight. Okay. Right now, he just has one of Aaron's books out, and. Uh, the page it's on is about antitoxins. The book is out, though. Mm -hmm. uh, Virion would spend some time looking through that, if it's, especially if it definitely looks like a potion-making situation. Uh, it is one of Arin's uh, um, journals, did you say, Austin? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, there's some uh, basic survival stuff. Um, what can and can't be eaten on Ladari, or at least based on uh, the experience on the uh, of the author, and it's uh, very much like uh, the other notes you've gone through. Um, so it seems like he has found some some ingredients that can have uh, effects on the uh, on on the body, such as like purifying them from toxins and such, and that's that's what the bookmark currently is. Um, is this unless you have proficiency with uh, with alchemy supplies? Um, nope. or the herbalist kit. Um, like you can tell what it's about, but I then he, he gets into like, huh? The elf trance thing. I can swap skill or tool proficiencies after I long rest. Oh, you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hm. And your long rest was completed. Uh, Right, it was completely after the monster attacked, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah, we never got to the mummy's <laughs> shift. It was only two, two, two hours into the long rest that uh, the monster showed up. Um. So you had already made your research, so you could have done that. Yeah. So, was he said, uh, um, alchemy and, um. Herbalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she will. She will take those for now. Okay. Um. So through your your trends, uh, uh, reorganizing your thoughts and the <clears throat> trying to pull at the strands of old old memories, centuries old things you have uh, uh, simply heard about and things to have actively read about or uh, studied um, it all comes back to you it takes a little bit of focus and uh, um, willpower but uh, there's uh, there's these memories that are floating back on the surface uh, and that you can uh, uh, easily now learn from um, the a large number of books that didn't really mean much to you before um, 
now you think you would be able to uh, to take a look at them and gather some more information and this one particular journal also it, it clicks it all makes sense a lot of things here are things you yourself have have studied in the past it was just a long time ago but it's not that it all comes back um as you confirm what squeak said um, that it appears that Pippa uh, was looking at the, all these potions with various effects, and one of the um, the ingredients that he seemed to have, uh, uh, he had highlighted it with a piece of charcoal under the words, um, seemed to have uh, um, to come from from this era, from Dustfall, uh, and to have the potential to. Oh, I'm saying this, but I should look at my list of ingredients. Yeah. Uh, um, which recipe have I given you a recipe that can unpetrify someone already, Austin? Uh, Pip had that one uh, a while ago. Okay. Uh, it only requires one thing, which is willow shade fruit. Okay, let me see actually see if it's uh, if it can be found. I don't you know. You mentioned it is, a while ago not. that it was a coastal thing. Yes, it is coastal. Ah, funny. Okay, uh, so let me let me go back on that. The the one major ingredient of this potion that Piv was looking at uh, would absolutely not be found in Dustfall at all. Uh, it, it grows wherever uh, it grows directly in water, um, and thus it would be nowhere near this environment. That would be the one thing, as far as petrification is concerned. Hmm. Well, that's good to know, though. There is there is not the off chance that there is some in this kitchen. I mean, on the off chance that there is, Virian would be tearing this kitchen apart, seeing if she could find any. Wow. <laughs> I guess there would be a possibility. Um, tell you what, we're going to make it a 5% chance. Okay. Um, so you can roll a d20 or you can roll a d100, um, whichever you prefer. It would be a nat like natural 20 on a d20 or a 96 and above on a d100. This is to the d20 because I don't have an actual d100 and I don't want to confuse myself. Ah, uh, fair. Nope. Okay. Inspiration. Uh, I already used is, mine. <laughs> and, and also, this is a percentage rule. Like, yeah. So, uh, inspiration would not apply. Uh, but, so cool. yeah, you, you begin to just tear up. Like, you, you, you open all the cabinets. You look under every slice of bread. Uh, <laughs> the majority of ingredients here seem to have a... Uh, the majority it's food and seasonings uh, not things that would go in potions and even though you find some like dried leaves and dried fruits and dried flowers uh, it's, it all seems to be uh, uh, spices or food uh, and no trace of this uh, uh, specific fruit uh, that uh, Pip has identified yeah, but the important thing is between reading the book, figuring this out, and then the idea to look for the kitchen, probably once everyone else is wake up, Virian is still like neck deep in like tearing this kitchen apart. It's a mess. It kind of looks like you fought that thing in your inside of the office. Um, but be, be, before we go uh, at the end of the long rest, um, and let's move on to Pontifex for a moment. Um, when Pontifex climbed up the, the ladder into the spa and mm -hmm. was moving towards the, the tub and just lying down and trying to relax it. Yeah, yeah you, you took off your armor? Uh, no, explicitly okay. not this time. Mm -hmm. He's actually um, fully clothed in there. And he's like, like cradling his staff, like holding it oh. in there. Oh. And you're like thanking the gods for Brook. Uh, you don't know what you would have done if he hadn't been brought back. Yeah. Um, there's a... Like, uh, you're trying to rest, but at the same time, there's this kind of nagging feeling in the back of your mind. Uh, and you look around. Your passive investigation is pretty high. And there's, there's yeah. a thought that strikes you. 
something in this room feels like it's not the way you left it. Oh. Three scales to the top of the shower. <laughs> for a better vantage point. <laughs> Stick into the uh, yeah, walls he's gonna... like a frog. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna he's gonna look around over here. Okay. Now I'll, really nothing else room now I'll take sense. an active uh, investigation check. Oh, you know I love these. Oh, I know you love those. In fact, if he knows that there's something afoot, he's just not sure. Can I guidance myself? Uh, yeah, yeah. You have you have come out of the bath uh, of the tub and you're like, doing an active effort to look for things. So yes, yes, you could. It's probably a big number. We'll find out. Uh, I rolled an eight, so it's a twenty-one. Twenty-one total. Yeah. With uh with my racial plus 1d4 and guidance brings up to a 21. Okay. Pontifex, um, there isn't a whole lot in this, in this area. It's a bathroom. Um, there, there's various supplies, uh, for, uh, for, 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 for the bathroom that uh, you never really touched. Um, you haven't needed them. Uh, there's a lot of things for taking care of hair that you've you've never needed, um, and you've mainly been using the tub and the spa next door. Uh, but actually, the... fun fact: Pontifact has been using the hair thing. <laughs> uh, Pontifex shaves his face. He has hair. He has facial hair. What? Keeps, I thought he, he didn't have any facial hair or any hair. Time. His head I is see. completely bald because of the scarring. Mm hmm. Uh, but he actually does grow pretty full facial hair. He just keeps it with very hair. clean and like oiled so that it doesn't quite grow as much, okay. but he does shave. So, so you actually tossed in like a few more extra supplies. Um, uh -huh. uh, Aaron as an, old, as an elf cannot grow a beard, uh, but he did, have, he did have like hair products. You've brought in your own things for, for shaving your beard and such. Um, and you're going through like those supplies, and um, that's that's not what ends up bothering you. What ends up bothering you is uh, the candles that are on top of this little cabinet thingy. Um, you've been in here just many, many, many nights, and you could swear that the number of candles has increased. Uh, uh, I'm going to. Um... Can I do this? Uh, yeah, he's going to one by one light these candles. Uh, and like have his staff at the ready to decimate something that jumps out. Uh, you light each of the candles one by one. Um, you're, you're just using prestidigitation and snapping your fingers. Um, first one lights the second lights and then um you you have uh, um gotten to the fourth one uh when you when you set the ah uh, what do you call it a the, the black part in english the wick wick yes uh you set that wick uh ablaze and in an instant uh the the candle uh disappears uh, and and instead it is replaced by a, a familiar creature uh, that immediately fills the room oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you mind I am in the bathroom <laughs> uh, is this before or after long rest you have not finished your long rest. Damn it. <laughs> uh, and this is where we're going to stop this session. What? <laughs> Resume next time. <laughs> Wait, why does it say one of two? Yeah, uh, uh, would you like would you like to see it uh, see it as a litter? Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Var it variant into form. Whoa. <laughs> oh, it's like up in the air. Yeah. Well, it's on, it, it, this one doesn't fly. It's supposed These to be down, models are cool. They got this as like two positions. I. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Why is there one of two? <laughs> <laughs> Why are there two? Wait for the second phase! Exactly, yeah. I, I don't think we were playing prop hunt today either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every Do good you boss mind? Fight has <laughs> Get out! <laughs> Wait your turn. Occupied. <laughs> Estoy occupado. Get out. Just stuff it in the sauna and turn the heat all the way up. <laughs> Don't make me give you a swirly. I'll do it. I've been called a bully. <laughs> oh my god. Waited my whole life to be the bully. <laughs> Not a nerd. This this was an unexpected <laughs> you guys encounter. Were, you guys were so close to leaving it in the tower. <laughs> oh no. Permanent monster. <laughs> uh, okay. Alright then. Um... Yo boy. <laughs> That's okay, you have me at my full AC now, fool. Sorry, Austin, that you have... with my mind. <laughs> you have effectively missed out on most of the session. No, jo I had Join a great the Sid Club. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the club, let's go. <laughs> where's is where's my backup now? character? <laughs> That's just squeak. He's just squeak. Yeah. <laughs> my armor's charged up and ready to go. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't use my tail unless Pit tells me to. Yep, I'm useless. I cannot attack. <laughs> if Pit doesn't say attack, I sit back. Oh, does he? Does he not follow the rules that, uh, um, um, like some summoning, uh, some some. Uh, no. Like the ranger's companion and such. That whenever no. the owner is incapacitated, nope. they're free to act. No, that's an he's, animal companion. This is a familiar. He's he's a familiar. There are some things that he can do differently yeah. because Pip is a pack, pack of the, the chain. chain warlock. But uh, yeah, he still can't attack unless Pip tells him to. Except but he can still use magic missiles. Ma right? Magic missiles. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one thing he can do on his own. All right. Uh Familiar acts independently of you, but always obeys your com commands. It draws to initiative, acts in its own turn, can't attack, but can take other actions as normal. Like cast a spell. If I had any. <laughs> hey, you know what? Me. Um, I I would be fine with adding in like one line of own brew. Um, to bring him like in line with, uh, I, I'm really just thinking of Ranger's companion at this point. That they get a little clause that says if if uh, you are incapacitated, then they are free to act as they wish in mm. combat. So he would have the ability to attack. Uh, um, specifically, going to only come if something has happened to him. And we deem this child is useless, and we're going to think <laughs> if we just knock him out, it, it, we can do all of the work. Don't, don't, don't push it. Mm. <laughs> Quickly, Brooke, knock out the boy. DM has given us new homebrew rule. How can we abuse this? How can we exploit I'm taking this it back and also right involve away. PvP? Ah, uh, rules. I'm going to add it under the battle rules section, okay. if I remember. I'm putting it in my notes right now. Um, I think we have this. Um, if Pip is incapa incapacitated... It's only for okay. Pip. That will, that will be a thing. <laughs> yeah, only for Pip. <laughs> it's a pip no other warlocks. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, thank you for joining me today. Um, this has uh, this has uh, this has gotten a lot worse than I thought. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. Uh, everybody, good for next week. Uh, not me. Oh, that's right. 
Yes, we we will not it. be here next Sunday. I I think I'm good. Wait, no, that's not a one. We pinned. I'm good. I, you know, I it's fine. I mean, Pontifex could just not be in the in the tower for some some weird, strange reason. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this little thing is like alone and not not with my frog boy uh, with, with no spell slots. It's he gets fine. petrified. <laughs> oh no! Uh... Go mad, me, bro. <laughs> so it's only it's my mind before and you failed. <laughs> it's only Matt who can it's only Matt who can be here next week. Did I hear that right? Seems so. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be okay with uh, handing over your card or sheet to someone else? Yeah, for sure. Okay, because if if only one person is missing, I'd like to to continue. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh. Pontifex's first action combat is lecturing this thing about the definition of insanity. Uh, okay. And just telling him to don't try to mind mess with me again. You failed last time. Don't do it again, please. <laughs> well, we, we, please. we will roll at the end at the beginning of combat please. and see what happens. Uh, we'll see. We'll be more like like this. <laughs> Your boy. <laughs> Ooh, really ah, cool. Perfect. So, so uh, it can just appear as anything. It's like, like an ultra mimic. And ah. it has some way to turn into objects, and clearly it was the collar. This is mm -hmm. we've gotten to like the SCP episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm just gonna click. I'm just gonna finish it on on this music. But yeah, thank you, thank you for attending today, uh, and thank you for uh, to to everyone who has watched this live, or we will watch it later. Uh, next, the uh, summary is going to be yours, Jory. It's going to be uh, your first recap. Oh my god, the pressure's on. The pressure <laughs> is on. <laughs> and yeah, I will see you next Sunday, most of you. And Matt, I will let you know if if uh, something terrible happens to Pontifex. <laughs> <laughs> if I need a new character, you let me know. <laughs> I'll let you know. He is next. Right. Yeah, it's I your turn. Next. I'm going to close the stream now. Bye, everyone. I am a gracious Bye. god. I will Bye. allow someone else to take my turn. Goodbye. Aw. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>